This episode of the Co-Optional Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, make it. Welcome, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast, episode Hello. Hey. 224, I believe. God, God. dang. Oof. So many. Oof. <laughs> hey, I didn't do at least 200 of them, so you know, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Hopefully, uh, we have averted some of our issues. You know, I'm not going to say that I have broadcasting issues, but I am broadcastingly challenged. <laughs> um, today is August 14th, 2018, and a lot of games getting released today. Uh, is that the truth? Um, what comes out What comes out today? Battle like, Battle 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 yesterday. Let's rewind a minute. Let's rewind a minute. Let's rewind a minute. I don't know if me saying, is that the truth is like the right <laughs> You can't like, handle the truth, truth Jesse Cox. Right now? <laughs> I don't know if that's what I meant, but <laughs> start the podcast with this but, skepticism but... right off the bat. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> so funny. Oh, uh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, Bifa came out today. Bifa? Yeah. Is that what we're calling it? Bifa? Bifa? I that's like it. I Bifa? Like Is that Fifa? Bifa. It Bifa. reminds me of that, that um, music <clears throat> video that's on YouTube. The, I'm a cow, bitch. That... <laughs> Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. That video? <laughs> I'll show it to you at the break. Bitch, I'm a cow. <laughs> Bitch, I'm a cow. It's a video. Anyways, I'm... keep going. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. And we have with us this week the very talented, the very console-focused <laughs> peanut butter gamer. <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez, I thought you must have been talking about somebody else when you brought up the talented part. Thank you. Aww. Thank you for having well, me. Well, Jesse already knows how talented he is, so... Ah, uh, okay. What? <laughs> he would ask He's got yes, quite the voice. I'll drink. My voice is dead right now. Hi. <laughs> Didn't mean you, to put I'm you on the spot you. with that. So during... during I, I feel like a decent number of people who are in chat right now, when I say that during sound check, I said to Jesse, I'm gonna make you some throat coat. He <clears> thought that that was a very weird phrase. I thought I it was very like, dirty. I, yeah, I feel like <laughs> there are plenty of people in chat who are gonna- I was go, up for it. Coat. I'm just saying, I, it, I, I've never heard it before. <laughs> it's like- It's, it's like, like a tea, right? You're a theater kid. How do you not know throat coat? It's like what you would drink to, to like, to loosen the up back. the shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't even know if it's like legit, but you it's like for it's Oh no, like a it's tea, legit. Right? I used it while singing, so yeah, that stuff is mm. legit. Yeah. It's like lemon juice, honey, ginger, like you get it, the old throat like coat. A, uh, concoction throat throat? for your throatal. Yeah, 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 yeah. The old throat coat. For the old throatal. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Julian, please don't make this into an animated segment. <laughs> I dare you to try and make it a non-dirty animated segment. I would love to know what Dodger's throat coat is. Throat coat. Don't brand it with Dodger, okay? Just on its own, sure. Dodger's throat coat. Oh. Dodger's throat coat. I feel she like, signed off on it. I feel like this is like an episode of, of the Co-Optional Lounge and we're playing snake oil right now. Brooke, go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Dodger's throat coat. How, how much time do I have in snake oil? 60 seconds? Shit. Pretty much. <laughs> it'll, coat, it'll coat your throat. Make everything go down real smooth. This is bad already. Let's move on. Nope, you go. Nope, 60 seconds. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it tastes great. It comes in a fantastic package. So fantastic, it's invisible. <laughs> why did we make it invisible? Because sometimes people are going to question why you got some throat coat on your on your counter this way nobody's got to know you could just grab it and time yeah, shit. good job <laughs> where do i I'm sign up it comes in a fantastic package throat coat comes in a fantastic package. 
What's on your mug, Brooke? What's on your mug? Is it is? Are, do you have some throat coat in your mug? It's bunnies. Oh, bunnies. Ooh. What's that is on the your mug? Rabbit I've ever seen in I my life. I am enjoying my uh, Dodger Coffee Company That's mug. This ooh, is my second nice. one. This is my second one, actually. I have another one to make sure what? I have one clean when the other one's not. Yes, clean. I too am enjoying Thank coffee in this mug of pens. I'm actually <laughs> not enjoying coffee in it, though, so I, I don't know if that's sacrilege or not, that's but okay. not I am enjoying. <laughs> Yay! My Dodger's daytime English breakfast tea in my Ooh. Dodger Coffee Company mug. So I am feeling the love. Hashtag right now. not sponsored. <laughs> hashtag actually not sponsored at all. Mm. <laughs> For real though, I had some of the cold brew a, a little while back, a little oh, while ago, and it was so it was good. legit. Thank you. Oh god. It, well, it, it like it's one of those coffees that just wakes you up like the split second you you take a sip of it. Well, it's it's <clears> so <throat> funny. I always make fun of everybody at the office because like you're not just supposed to. Period. It's just so, in general. <laughs> it's so concentrated. You have to dilute it. You have you're to. You're supposed to. Dilute to. It, but yeah. Everybody at the office is just like pop it, drink it. And I'm like, what I did too. Do I work with? Like everybody's just like, I need to fucking wake up. Who needs a double <laughs> shot of espresso if you've got the cold brew in the fridge? Like that's True. what I want to know. I'm still going through cold brew. Actually, I have some. <laughs> I like to mix. I saved mine for the for like days where I really needed like energy, and it worked. Yes. So I, I did. I mixed nice. it down with some some cream a, li a couple times, but most of the time I just had it straight. Yo, yeah. can we talk about like <laughs> sweet gaming fuel? From? This is gaming That's fuel. Like <laughs> I, all of a sudden, everything I want vanilla sweet cream in. What happened to me? I'm just what like a sweet vanilla cream? sweet cream. You haven't right? got it's it's not officially fall yet, so you're you're getting right before the pumpkin era oh, comes in because it's august like, it's august cream in that it might I, I i know it's not an la thing it has to be like just a coffee thing now before vanilla it was always cream and sugar nothing like, you want vanilla sweet cream in that i'm like I'm just gonna i do. guess i fucking do what and it's sweet delicious cream. sweet cream cold brew jesus christ it was the first thing that popped up what doesn't, is sweet cream doesn't google throat, throat coat google sweet, like, sweet cream <laughs> go <laughs> I guess, I don't know, but it's delightful. It makes my life a little bit happier. Oh, here we go. Okay, when a recipe calls for sweet milk, it is referring to whole milk. If mm -hmm. a recipe calls for sweet cream, it is referring to half and half or whipping cream. Oh, oh yeah, putting whipping cream and stuff is... Putting whipping like, cream directly into your coffee. It's very fattening, but I enjoy <laughs> that's it. very, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, I'm gonna let you know. That's that's why that's why I'm fat. <laughs> I won't be like... Put sweet cream in that shit. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Tastes delicious. Oh, amazing. Yeah, so what anyway. came out today? <laughs> uh, yeah. There were how many games? What came out today? <laughs> Bifa. Bifa. Uh, Bifa. Battle for yeah. Azeroth. Battle for Azeroth. Um, oh, that's what you guys are. I'm just sitting here like out of the... What is Bifa? I knew that. I knew I knew the new WoW expansion Bifa was out. We enjoy the keeping you in the dark. I try to get it called, but... <laughs> No one will call it that. Um, Thank you. I'm also, gonna forever now. also out is uh, Walking Dead Final Season Episode 1, if you enjoy yes. Telltale Games. Is that the third one? I think it's the, the last fourth? one. That's all fourth? I know. <laughs> it is the I last. played the first one, and it made me cry, and then I didn't play the second one again. I really oh. should, though. The second yeah, one the is like a big game. time skip, isn't it? The second or one, no. I think so. Yeah, she's older. I, I've seen I the, the pic images of it. What's the time? I don't know. I don't know anymore. They make too many. Are they, are they worth playing after the first one, though? I haven't played. I I only ever played chapter one, game one. And that's Jeez. it. I don't play I, it would, I bet it'd be a good stream game. Section one. I'm not going to admit to playing <laughs> The Walking Dead. I'm not going to I'm not going to own it. I'm not going to own it. Uh, no, you got to. No, no. I, no, I haven't played this one, though. I haven't played the, uh, the final season, episode one. I haven't season even played two. the past couple seasons either, so right. I can't really talk about it, but... Um, I mean, I, I, we can always come back to anything that you guys have played. I just wanted well, to answer Jesse's initial question. The other thing that came out, uh, Death's Gambit. So if you like oh, your yeah. 2D adventure RPG, which I do, uh, and Phantom Doctrine. So it's like very xcom -y spy stuff, which is nice. And I could have sworn there was something else. Death's Gambit totally looked up my alley. Yeah, same. I totally forgot about that game. I should... Snag that while I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Speaking of Walking Dead, 
Yeah. Did we last week mention the fact that I thought that was uh, you after Gambit your stream with Prindor in Soul Calibur? No, wait, Tekken. Negan's coming wait, to two. What? Like, like the guy from the TV show Walking Dead mm -hmm. is right. going to be in Tekken. Really? Huh. Yeah. They did it at, at Evo. They did a trailer, and literally, they they like announced all these new characters. And then at the very end of the trailer, it was like, <laughs> it was like. A whistle, and then like this dude shows up in a baseball bat, and you're like, "The fuck!" And it's just like Negan. And everyone's like, "What's <laughs> happening?" <clears throat> yeah, joining oh, the fight as a playable character out. in Tekken Seven. What? It's so Jeffrey bizarre. I've never seen anything like that. But I think it's great. I need. We need more random fighting game. Like, yeah, and in this game, Colonel Sanders. I'd be amazing. <laughs> No, that's actually a legitimate thing. I saw that announcement, yeah. and I'm just like, what? It's happening. It happened. I was there. Everyone you was were... totally confused. I was there. <laughs> it was great. People were like, the f okay. I wonder what the Holy weirdest shit. like character added into a fighting game is. Mm -hmm. I remember when they added Link to Soul Calibur, too. That was pretty crazy. Yeah, so the new Soul Calibur has uh, Geralt in it from Witcher. Um, yeah, they kind of made that a thing now, where they just add random characters. Yeah, I think it's great. New Street Fighter character is basically Space Lincoln. <laughs> it's a golden bearded Space, space Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. And he's like, I'm the president of the universe. I swear to God, that's totally true. I'm not making that up. <laughs> <laughs> he came out on stage and he did like a, a, like a, he's like, power to the people. And he literally is Abraham Lincoln, but dressed like he's from space. It was incredible. Huh. Yeah. This, this is the new Street Fighter? A new Street Fighter character, yeah. Man, that's crazy. I don't play a lot of fighting games. I tried to get into them a while back, but... Me neither. I like watching fighting games. Same. I enjoy... I I used to really enjoy playing them, and now everybody that I can play them with is good at fighting games, and that's mm. not fun for me anymore. <laughs> it feels like I'm 10 years old again trying to play a game with my brother where he just kicks my ass over and over and over again and, and I just, don't learn do you, anything and I, I just get frustrated. Do you start mashing the buttons? Like all all train of thought actually begins to leave you when you get that frustrated and you revert yeah. to like your seven-year-old self or something where you're like, oh no, I'm not even going to bother with strategy anymore. I'm just going to mash all of the buttons. Like fight yeah. or flight kicks in where you're just like, I just have to like, do anything I can to like stay in this game. You yeah, I used to play a lot of Smash. lifting the controller because you're like, this will help. <laughs> Oh my God, in college, everybody wanted to play Smash. And I was like, sure, yeah, I remember that being fun. It's not, so it's, bad. it's not fun with people who are good at Smash. Yeah, no. Unless All you, you, people who you are just good have to be one of those floaty bitches and just float around and be like, oh, ball drop on somebody. Yes, Smash. this is the truth. All of you are good at Smash. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, Peevers. All these people are good at Smash. I'm not good at it. All these people are good at Smash who invite their friends to play with them just so they can shit on them. You are bad people. You are bad people, and I do not like you. That is everyone in this office. Talk <laughs> Gerard, talking to That's you. what fighting games become, though. Like, if oh, you're not good at it, all. it's just your friends. I do that with Wii Sports Resort. I'm like, anyone want to play Wii Sports Resort with me? And then I just kick their butt, at it, and then everybody gets mad and quits. <laughs> I just want someone to have. play with. I, I, understand, I understand the plight of a fighting game fan where they just want to play, but I feel ever like since I did YouTube, it's not time to practice as much. Yeah, I, I feel think like that's, that's really that's it. I don't do Smash content, up, so. I feel like that's where I wound up being with Towerfall. Eventually, everybody would just be like, yeah, I don't really want to play Towerfall anymore. And I was like, why? How oh. come? <laughs> and it was probably because I constantly was asking people to play Towerfall and then just. Just so you could stomp them. I get it. To crush the end. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, yeah, you people are the worst. You're the worst. I'm type so of rarely like that good at a game. And I just loved it so much. And nobody wanted to play it with me anymore. <laughs> The only fighting game I ever really got into playing was Marvel vs. Capcom because mm -hmm. that was that was what we had. We had like the Dreamcast, and I lived with three other guys in college. Yeah, uh, that's a story. Um, <laughs> we all worked at the same movie theater. Nothing sorted. Nice, it's just nice. we all worked mm. together. So I feel like if reality shows had been more of a thing back then, that could have actually been a pretty cool reality show because a lot we did bowling in our hallway. Like that's a thing that we did because awesome. all we had was a long hallway in our apartment but anyway back to games so that's what we would do <laughs> we would play that and we'd play rival schools with the black boot disc because goodness knows we have to 
play the actual Japanese version. You know, you can't right, just, of course. No. Can't YouTube wait, has can't a lot of that. upsides. YouTube Twitch stuff has a lot of upsides, but I do, I can't lie, I miss working with my friends a little bit and like goofing around at work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I do miss um, that whole physical times. aspect to it because you're like, you could, I don't know, you could bond over that in a weird way. It's like as soon as someone you were working with in a company was like, you play games too? Their eyes lit up and it's like, I'm not alone. Play with me. Do you want to come over and play some games? And that now, was how my dorm life kind of was. Right. Like it wound up it wound up splitting up into the people who were just like, we just wanna, you know, get fucked up and hang out and <laughs> party or whatever. And then and then there was everybody else who was like, you know what I just realized is we could play risk online. We could all have one big risk game going all the time. And we were like, oh, <laughs> oh my shit, God. that's the best Losing idea it. ever. And we Losing just had it. like a huge risk that game. That is the best game. idea ever. Five <laughs> different people who were in the dorms. Yeah. It was amazing. In my apartment with the guys, <laughs> because we all worked at a movie theater and we worked at an AMC. And we, of course, if you worked at an AMC at any point in life, you were a theater snob because you're like, our theater is like better than any other theater because we have like awesome stadium style seating. This was before right. other please, theaters started please, doing it, Regal right? cinemas, get out of town. You don't even. But this was back, I mean, we didn't have we're a Regal near theaters. us. That's the whole thing. So people just didn't know any better. So you, you got to be very elitist, like your popcorn sandwich better and all the, you know, just stupid snotty little things. Keep in mind we were teenagers, you know, we know nothing. Right, right. I used to work in the record store right across the, from the mall and then the theater was starting to open and I'm like, oh, that'd be a cool thing. So I doubled, I worked at the record store. So it's like Empire Records on one side of my life as a teenager. The other side, I was a projectionist at a movie theater. So we get this idea in our first apartment together because I moved out like the day I turned 18. And that was the whole thing. We were just so stoked. We're like, yeah, we're going to go to college. We're working at the theater. We're all going to live together so we don't have to pay heinous amounts of rent. This is going to be awesome. Well, we decided that because we had different furniture that we were bringing. This is our first apartment. We did that whole thing. Oh, we signed the papers. Let's sleep here overnight. There's nothing in the place. Utilities aren't even turned on, but let's sleep here. We're we're spending the night. Like that's, That's how lame we were. Just pretext <laughs> so when we finally get all our stuff in we're setting up to play marvel versus capcom because this is like we this has been coming and we're just like oh yeah we're just gonna get our best teams and we're just gonna go at it uh you know our first in fight in the house we decided that in order for spectators who came over from neighboring apartments who also worked at the theater or went to school with us <laughs> we would set up yeah. a secondary couch up on cinder blocks behind the current couch so that way we could achieve stadium style seating it's a stadium, yeah. in our yeah. own living room like <laughs> that's pretty neat though actually yeah, yeah. i had a better punchline for this but story but it's just bad yeah. did people fall off did was there a death how did people earthquake <laughs> happened uh... um yeah Kind of because whenever someone would, there was you know, kind just, of death, <laughs> kind of death. Well, yeah. Um. Well, because some people who would come to spectate would be inebriated, mm-hmm. and of course they'd be on the couch like behind us, and people would go mm-hmm. crazy with like different combinations. They're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you did that!" And of course they'd like stand up and they're halfway drunk, so that would like tilt one part because couches aren't meant to be lifted up on top of cinder blocks when you already have the feet yeah. from the couch and they weren't detachable on said couch. So there was some leveling. Issue, shall Just we a little say. Duct, duct tape on there. Yeah. Just like, it'll work. It'll stay. <laughs> even like, even if you put it up on like pallets or something, I would be worried. Right. I, I would still just be Because like, there are people jumping on the couch. We, had, we, we, we were those kids in college. We were like, we're going to put couch covers on our couches because we know people are going to get drunk and throw up all of our couches. Right. <laughs> so yeah, there were like. You're in college. What yeah. could go wrong? <laughs> You 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 just have all this student loan. That was me in college. I had all this student loan debt, but I hadn't quite yet reached the point where I grasped the concept or the like consequences of that. So I'm just like, you go everything's crazy. good. Yeah. yeah, I know this YouTube thing will work out. It it's wasn't until fine. I left and had to like start making payments on it that I was like, fuck, <laughs> sucker. <laughs> Yeah. If if Real only life. I hadn't signed up for that card to like eat at the cafeteria every day. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I should have eaten at home. I did that my first year and then after that I was like no nope. because the the first year my parents and I sat down and like decided everything we were going to go for and I wasn't too worried about it and then the next year my mom was like, "Okay, well this is these are your decisions now, so you like <laughs> balance it out, figure you get to it live out a bit. like what Damn, yeah. mom, mom did you like 
yeah, no, these are your problems. Deal with it. <laughs> no, it was perfect. Like first, yeah, no, get like, that. You're gonna you're gonna move out. This is gonna be your tough yep. year, you know, emotionally. So yep. we'll like help you sort it all out. But after that, you got to figure that shit out for yourself. And I was like, oh my god, having cafeteria food is so expensive. <laughs> I'll figure something else out. I'll get a kettle. It's fine. <laughs> you could have physically like eaten at a McDonald's or something for cheaper than what for way cheaper. The yeah. yeah. That dollar menu came in handy during sophomore year. <laughs> I always told myself, well, I'll get the cafeteria food so I can meet pe some people. But instead, I would just find an empty table or like the couch in front of the TV and just sit there by myself. <laughs> then go back into my room. What what YouTube videos do we got to do now? YouTube wasn't a thing. <laughs> You're so, you're so you're sweet. Sorry, yes. You oh, sweet God. summer child. How old are you? <laughs> Jesse, let's talk about the good guess, old days. <laughs> there, I don't know, think they were. I'm still waiting for those to kick in. Everyone's like, remember the, the good, good old days? The good old days? They haven't happened for you yet? <laughs> when did that shit happen? Yeah. I think for about a week during my senior year, I could consider that a good old day. That was pretty nice. What, because you just knew you'd be getting out? And is that it? Or? I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel I like know. for me, the good old days was like partially good and partially not good, right? It's like there are yeah. aspects of my college life that I miss. There are aspects of being in high school that I miss. And then the rest of it was garbage. And I'm so glad it's behind me. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how I like to try to look at everything now because I realized what you're saying is kind of true. You look back on. Like I look back on being in college, it's kind of like the worst part of my life, but I look back on it with nostalgia. So right. I try to appreciate every part of my life that I'm in while I'm in it. Cause I know that even if I, e even if it kind of sucks later on, I'll look back and be like, man, I wish it was, I missed that part when it sucked. Like, that was great. <laughs> well, life just suck a little more. I mean, <laughs> looking back, there's always something about your life that was maybe simpler or like a bit more straightforward, right? And then life yeah. gets more complex as you get older. So you, you look back and go, man, my life was so, I know that it's not gonna take too long before I'm looking back on when I didn't have a baby and been like, man, everything was so much easier to do back that time. Yeah. You could I leave all, your house so alone. Much easier you know what? <laughs> but you'll also miss when you had a, when you had a baby too. And when, when they're grown up, that's the thing. Yeah, you gotta, right? you gotta appreciate the moment because you'll you miss live, it. Live in the now. Yeah. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> live in the future, guys. Live in the future. That's where the real living's at. You know, I'm, still, I'm 20, 38. You 20, late. It, in in the future, Jesse Cox will not do like 15 hour streams with Crendor for Bifa launch. In the future, man, who knows what's gonna happen in the future? I could be, I could be in space. That's space, true. Jesse. We could space be. butterfly, Jesse. Uh, you, no one even knows where I'll be. You haven't even true. seen his final form yet. <laughs> no, nope, I'll, have, I'll have an extra wing. Technology's just doing this, y'all. We'll yeah, all be I'll robots. Fall, I'll have a wing or some shit. I'll, float. I'll have a wing or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> I'm a wing or some shit. Wait, but are you going to go for like, like you replace your arm with a wing, wyvern style, or you add wings and you also have yeah, uh, I was thinking more final boss style, but you know, like there's just a wing somewhere on my body. Oh, that and, sprouts out at just yeah, the right it's moment. Yeah, like a wing, okay. and then for some reason I'm angelic, but also evil, and I make <laughs> you question religion, and then when you defeat me, God is dead. I think that's how that works. Ah, right. I think Sounds I like an RPG. In the future, that's Final Fantasy. Yeah. yeah I think I figured out how Final Fantasy works. Yeah, I got it. <sighs> yeah. So, Jesse, yeah. what do you actually think of uh, <clears throat> Battle for Azeroth since you've been playing yeah, it? Yeah, talk about Battle uh, nonstop. Yeah. Um, so... As usual, when it comes to MMOs, I'm, I exist in a world of like, I won't make a final judgment until I do like rating stuff. But um, at the moment, it's like the 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 grind and the leveling is it's fun. There's um, a lot of silly stuff to do. There's a lot of ridiculous things that come along that like are fun. The questing feels very smooth, and. Uh, there's a lot of like things to get caught up in doing because there's just so much shit in WoW now. Um, you said that one, like the writing was yeah. getting extremely good. So just like even the initial starting quest since the expansion, are you still feeling like the bridge is very smooth, is crossover well? Like, like so, so there's a really so basically, um, with no spoils, there's like the <laughs> opening thing that happens when you 
uh, do like the pre-expansion stuff, right? There's that main right. storyline. That funnels into the fact that, at least on the Horde side, you have to infiltrate Stormwind. Like, that's the main starting point of this expansion. And you do this storyline there that ends in an amazing cinematic. It's one of the coolest. A lot of Alliance ships explode. It's <laughs> So then, the minute that happens, you arrive in Zandalar, which is like this troll capital. It's this giant, big-ass, like, one of the zones is literally just the main city. And there are quests throughout it. It's enormous. It's like Blizzard said... Undercity was a shit show and no one could figure out how to get around. We can make it. We can make something worse. We can make something even. We're going to destroy Undercity. We're going to make something even crazier. It's so big. I, I was just lost the entire time I was walking around it. Um, but uh, you get there and it literally becomes one of those tropey things where it's like, ah, yes, the princess is the only one who sees the truth. And the old <laughs> king is surrounded by advisors who are all plotting against him. And it's like, got to stop those advisors. Meanwhile, you just got off of this whole storyline that's like, everyone's at war. Shit's going down. And, like, you get there, and it's like, okay, um, come back to me in 100 war supplies. The war's on hold till then. It's like, oh, okay. So you just, like, go off. And it feels like, even though it's fun, it feels like the story at the moment is literally trying to just collect allies for a war that's, like, coming, but it's a war that already started, if that makes any sense. It's like, yeah. shit's already happening, but... Right. You're on pause for the moment. It's like, okay, for the next, from level 110 to 120, we're putting the war on pause. Go level up, come back to me at 120, and we'll start this whole shit back up again. It's like a very bizarre, I get why they do that. It's just very bizarre. Uh, but it's fun. It's like a fun experience. Um, so far, I've managed to get a pet cat, a pet little raptor baby, a, uh, a ducky. You know, Ducky from Land Before Time, I have Ducky oh, as a pet. Ducky. Oh, Ducky. Important things. <laughs> the real important things in a while. Things that matter. All these, yeah, the things that what are class really important. are you, Jesse? Uh, I'm a troll shaman, <clears throat> and right. I'm a troll enhancement shaman, which means uh, I'm currently the worst class in the game. Uh, they are broken to the point of being so broken that Blizzard was like, we're going to fix them, but it won't be till 8.1. We are currently at 8.0. <laughs> 8.1 mm -hmm. could be six months away? I don't know. Who knows? So I'm literally playing a broken class that just, like, does... The other day, I was with Krendor. Krendor <laughs> is playing a warrior for the first time ever. He has to press four buttons. Literally, he presses four <laughs> buttons. In order to even do remotely the same damage as him, I'd press nine. So literally, I have to cycle through nine buttons to do damage. And he's just <clears> like, <throat> three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. He's, just, he's, like, goofing around. And I'm just like... Cool. This is this is great. This is so great. Um, yeah. And so it, I was in dungeons and shit, and he's like, "I'm number one on DPS." I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear it. Yeah. I'm very happy so, for you. I'm just yeah. <laughs> great, great friend. Um, yeah. I love this idea of the of World of Warcraft. All the expansions seem to be kind of like this, where it's like, oh, "There's all this crazy stuff going on," but everybody's like, "Hold on, we got to put this on hold." Undertale fan one two three is only level twelve. We gotta wait for him. We gotta wait for him to get up to level yeah, sixty like, before eh, we can really him. do anything. Just boost this him. time. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, I was just saying buy the boost. Yeah, Done. No. You don't have to wait. This time, this time it feels like th there's a real disconnect because the whole story going into this is like they've a oh, fucking war is happening. Right. Literally. The factions are at it. A two capitals have been destroyed. Two capitals that have been in the game since the beginning are gone. Like everyone's pissed off at everyone. Sarfang, one of the oldest characters in the game, who's been there since the beginning, is like, "F this shit. I don't even want to be involved. You guys are the worst." Like everyone's going crazy. And during this huge epic event, it's like you you manage to escape with some new friends, and your whole thing's like, "We need allies in this war." It's like, okay, sure, I get that, but. I'm on this island in the middle of nowhere helping trolls, like, fight snake men and uh, little fox people. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think Not the I little fox people. Oh, my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a screenshot of that to uh, Twitter at some point. Dodger, there's a little fox girl who is, like, uh -oh. all, all eyes and a little yes. oh, my, oh, my God. It's the cutest everything. And then she has little cat friends. She's a, she's a little fox kid <laughs> with cats. And I was just like... I know this person. 
it was it's like it's very interesting the story of each of each zone is i don't know what the alliance version is although i do know the alliance storyline is literally there's a zone that's literally the witcher it's literally <laughs> it's the just witcher. the witcher okay oh Excellent. my god the there are three old crones and the three they literally just look oh. like characters from witcher there are like there's all the monsters look very witchery it's like, did you guys also work on that DLC? Mm. <laughs> it's it is, it is, like, it's incredibly fun, but at the same time, WoW slowly becomes Mimi too. So the troll zone, um, or the troll, the three troll zones are very interesting. They're all sort of different, and it's all this idea of you're going to each zone, and each zone has like one of the generals trying to conspire against the king, that kind of shit. But the troll area, I want to know what it was like before the developers saw. Uh, Black Panther, because literally <laughs> everything Welcome is Black Panther. Welcome to Wakanda. <laughs> oh my god! I, the trolls literally go Zendala forever. Like no! It, it, oh my god! Really? Yeah. Then again, oh my god. It, isn't that very wow though? To very yeah, much kind of pop culture. You know, it's super is, but it's but like this is the things that the the like culturey meme things that are in this expansion are like there's a lot of them, and it's cute because you're like oh that's fun, but it's just. I would love to know what the culture of a troll would have been like before they saw Black Panther and made, and we're like, oh, let's just change it all to be Black Panther. It's, there's, there's one area you go to where there's a, um, it literally is like the Black Panther temple, and you right. have to like go up into it, and you become this giant tiger guy, and you run around and kill Naga and stuff, but it's like, every line of dialogue is just basically from Black Panther at that point. You're just like, this is bizarre but all right i'm enjoying this let's do this yeah i would love to know what the actual troll like racial lore was where they're like fuck it yeah this guy's named Sichala, but we're gonna call him <laughs> chala t it's like okay cool all right no i don't know it's it's one of those things where it's it no, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just I was going through a thread where people were literally saying the exact same thing it's literally too much black panther in trolls like yeah. what's going on? <laughs> it's it's, it's not it, like I have no problem with it. I think it's really cute and funny sometimes yeah. when like out of nowhere one of the trolls says something. But I would love like the racial identity of the trolls is now just Wakanda, right? And it's like, well, what what were they? What would they have been before? Because before they were all like Jamaican dudes, and then they sort of un-Jamaicanize them, and now they're just like Wakandans. It's like, oh, okay, but they're trolls. All right, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It's a very, the like top sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jesse. I was just gonna say that the um the top like upvoted thing on that specific thread is just like side note, these are the same Jamaican derived language trolls who are now acting the flavor of a fictional African movie land called Wakanda, while their city is obviously Mayan in design. Pick a theme. <laughs> it's legitimately like the city here's the thing. The troll zones are beautiful. The three the three zones on Zandalar are like right. One is a jungle area that is all very Mayan themed and it's beautiful and it, like it's incredible. It's gorgeous looking. The other zone is filled with blood trolls and has this sort of like creepy. Um, there's one part where there's a temple of the dead and above it is like this fucking blood moon and it looks the screenshot ability of that area is incredible. There's a desert area that's completely devoid of life. Oh, god damn it. You know what? Speaking of me. <laughs> In that desert area, they have a they have like a coastline. And when mm. you go to the coastline, there are a bunch of skeletons and, and zombies and shit there. And you go through this quest line about it. You basically find a skeleton who's wants to mutiny against his skeleton captain, and they're all alive for some reason. And you're like, oh, I wonder where this is gonna go. Literally, it's Pirates of the Caribbean. You end up going to an island <laughs> filled with gold. As you collect coins to give it to this guy because he's coin hungry, you become a skeleton. Then you fight the pirate captain, and he's a skeleton. And he doesn't—it's insane. The only the, the the funny part at the end of that is that the fact that like the skeletons they don't give up the gold; they just like the idea of having the gold. And then they yeah. go back to the mainland, and then they start trading it to people. They're like, "We'll give you gold for that," and it's like, "Oh, that's cute." So everyone's gonna become a skeleton. That's very that's very that's a cute ending, right? <laughs> but but the idea is just like, "Oh, now I'm playing Pirates of the Caribbean," and it's just I don't know. It's <laughs> one of those things where. At the time, it's very cute, but story-wise with all of WoW, people who are looking for lore and like real lore-heavy stuff, and like the, the zone we started with, um, Jesus Christ, what was the name of that zone? Vuldoon, I think. 
uh, is it the story that's own literally can be summed up in like three sentences, maybe two sentences. Oh, that's it's a shame. it's it's very short on lore mm -hmm. and heavy on silly quests and fun things. And so we started a second zone. I expected that one to really pick <laughs> up the, the lore bits. And so far, again, I can sum up what's happened in that zone in about a sentence because it, I, I, I think someone posted this. Um, they said it feels like what we're doing right now is the same. If you back in Legion did the quest to get um, – the Void Elves or the the High Mountain Torin or like all the allied races. It mm -hmm. feels like what we're doing right now is a much longer version of those quests. We're doing all the things we're doing to try mm -hmm. to get the allied races on our side, but like it doesn't seem like it affects that much in the world of Warcraft. I but again, I'm not 120, so I have no idea what happens at 120. Shake <laughs> it down. It could be surely at the higher levels they have like some real lore stuff. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's you know, and that's, that's why all I always can really rest on. But if I, I always if reserve there are, if like with every expansion there are a bunch of people who are like, oh, I'm gonna get back into WoW. Like if there's no like real thick lore happening for. Well, I think that might be good level. though, maybe because if you're just getting back yeah. into it and you aren't caught up on the shit that's happened for the last 15 years, it might benefit you to be like oh this is a cute little quest where i raise a, a triceratops and i make it like my pet right like that kind of shit is a lot easier to swallow than like ah oh, yes the 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 old gods are finally back again and azeroth has been wounded and it's but blood that's is the epic the shit that you want to play for isn't oh, it? oh i get that that's what i want to play for and i'm ready for that but i yeah i don't know i honestly don't know i feel I like couldn't... if i if i came if i came back to a game that I hadn't played for a long time, sure. and everything that I was playing was just fluff, I'd get bored. Well, and that's, I mean, that I think is, that's one of my concerns that I, you know, uh, am, am working through mentally, is it seems like uh, at the moment, much of the zones has a lot of fluff um, mm -hmm. and a lot of callbacks. So in, uh, God, I don't even know the zone names anymore. One of the, uh, Zuldazar, I think is the big one, the big troll zone. The one with the um, dinosaur you can like ride and stuff, or the one that carries yeah, things. Yeah, it's, it's basically like the main troll hub. Right. Um, in the top corner, one of the corners, you get a quest to go meet uh, Hemet Nessingwary, who's been like a staple throughout all of WoW. He's the the. Every the time great... I see him, I think of you, Jesse. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, Hemet Nessingwary, and I just shoot. You, you do the voice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he he's been a staple throughout the entire thing, and every time it's a little it's a little different, right? So like. In Wrath, it was uh, the fake PETA organization trying to stop him. In some of the other expansions, it's like all about like one, it's about him raising his son. What about it? like all that stuff? Uh, this time, it literally is Predator. It's just straight up, he's in the jungle hunting shit, and now something's hunting him. Like that's the plot line. And it's like, that's cute. That's great. It's a nice callback. I love that stuff. As, as a fan of WoW, I get that. It, it's super fun. But it has nothing to do with the overall story. It does not affect shit at all. I, it's enjoyable, but as a person who's like, all right, let's get back to this war. Like, we've been hyping up this shit. Like, we are in it. Shit's happening. And then there's this, like, the old gods are here. There's this other threat going on. And there's so much, like, I do not envy the job of Blizzard writers or developers or whoever because no. there's so many threads, and they have to connect all of them, and they yeah. can never pull it off. It's an impossible task. It just – That needs to future-proof. Like everything, because you're obviously going to need to add more content as the game stagnates out when everybody yeah. has reached max level. So future-proofing some of that stuff must be really difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. it's just an impossible. It, it seems like an impossibility, just the worst type of task. But with that said, everything I've done so far, everything Krendor and I did when we, when we played was like really enjoyable. I have no qualms about the expansion so far. It's just like I'm waiting for it to really ramp up. And mm. so far there is, I don't even see the ramp. So far I'm enjoying Ooh. what I'm doing, but I don't see the ramp up to like, now we back fucking in it. Even the, um, <laughs> e like even the quests that are like, okay, now go to the other faction's island and go mess with them are kind of like slow ramping up. So mm. I'm waiting, I'm waiting because there's, there's, you can see the achievements. There's definitely things coming down the pipeline that are like, holy shit, all right, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm just not there yet. And I feel like, all right, I, I, you know, it's an MMO, it's new expansion, we're enjoying our time, but 
but I'm waiting for it to really grab me. So we'll see. Would you say that you feel like it's, I don't know, more of like a linear expansion for you at this point? Because, no. or do you feel like it's side quest heaven, but you yeah, just oh, devoid of that's lore? That's the inherent problem. Yeah. If I had, so last expansion. Mm hmm. Um, so, uh, go back to Warlords of Draenor, right. which was two expansions ago. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of that was like, you're going to have a garrison yep. and you're going to build your garrison from that garrison point. You're going to go off and you're going to go to like the horde zone, yep. right? Or if you're in the alliance, you're going to do the alliance starting zone. And then from there, you're going to move from zone to zone, to zone, to zone, to zone, to you get the very end, yep. right? And that's sort of the way it's always been. Last expansion Legion was Different, literally... Yeah. Every zone has its own story, and mm -hmm. they all somehow connect to the overall story. But you can start wherever you want, and shit will level up with you. Right. So if you start in one zone at 110, if you come back to that zone at 115 later, things will be 115 there. Everything's going to level with you, and the experience can be however you want. There aren't going to be zone overloads, because one of the things they recognized in Warlords of Draenor was that that garrison starting mission. I remember Krendor and I sitting there for an hour and a half just trying to do it. Because there were so many people trying to do the one thing you yep. had to do. It was the gatekeeping thing. Yep. Preventing you from doing the rest. It sucked. It was an unfortunate mess. I, I waited but, until uh, other people were offline. I, I totally yeah. agree. I, I understand. It was <clears throat> and so this in, in uh, Legion, they were like, you can start anywhere. So there won't be a million people around you. Trying, and it was great. It was a really smart idea. But the problem Legion had, and I think it's a problem that uh, BFA has, is that because there isn't a linear story flowing through everything. There's just this overarching story. Mm. Most of the stuff you do in each zone isn't really relative to everything overall. Right. It's just about that zone storyline. And much of that is kind of like fluff, right? Um, in Vol'Doon, the story that we did, the story there's like one of the generals is allying with like the sworn enemy of, you know, very tropey, the sworn enemy of the trolls. And they're working behind the scenes to do some evil shit. And that's like literally this plot line. And then that plot develops to that zone and then it ends. Like that plot line ends with literally what all plot lines like this end, either a dungeon or a raid, right? And then that's it for that zone. And then you go back to the main hub and then they're like, you did a good job over there. Now check out one of these other zones you can go to. And you're like, okay. And then you go to that zone, you do that area. And I think that might be the problem that I'm having, which is like, there is no main storyline. And the main storyline right. right now is like, See so you at 120. When you hit 120, we'll get back to that shit, which is like, okay, cool. But it's a weird disconnect because we just got literally the war just started. It would be like if if a, a major war broke out, then everyone was like, time out, time out, time out. We got some shit to do back home really quick, but <laughs> there's some it, trolls on some islands over here. We, gotta we will talk get to. back to this. Mark <laughs> like, my words. <laughs> a week. Let's say a week. We'll come back together and we will fight again. It's yeah, it's it's a weird disconnect, but Hmm. Whatever. I guess it's something I'll find out. Next week, I could be like, this is the greatest goddamn expansion I've ever played. Maybe. I, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have no clue. But right now, I'm just like, all right, let's see where this goes. Mm. Would, would you say like there are maybe either the breadcrumbs to the next zone are either too blatant or they're just variety? Oh, there are no breadcrumbs. Variety? There are no breadcrumbs to zones. Um, they did that. If you go back and do the old content that they read in Cataclysm, that yeah. literally is breadcrumb to zone to zone to zone. Like a yeah. story flowed through it. And they did that in most of the other zones and most of the other expansions up until uh, Legion. And Legion, they stopped that. The breadcrumb was like, go back to your war table and go to this other zone because the war is still going on. But there right. is no war right now because in that one, it was you're fighting the Legion. The Legion is yeah. invading Azeroth, so you need to go to different zones to fight them off. This one's like, well, the troll emperor king is, like, having some trouble, and his daughter's like, I need you to go and deal with his generals and counselors because they're all bad people. Like, okay. So you deal with one, and you come back, and she's like, you did a good job. Go deal with another. It's like, oh, okay. You go off and do that. I have no idea what the alliance version is. It could be, like, way more thought out and totally different. But for right now. Somehow I doubt it. <laughs> the version's kind of like. Meh. <laughs> Like, like the, here, the, but... the impetus for doing things is kind of meh, but the actual stuff you're doing is I'm continually impressed by the questing and wow, like it never feels stale. It always is fun. Even if it's still go collect 50 bear asses. By the way, I had an amazing moment the other day that blew my mind and I, I need bear to find asses. it and clip it. You're, yeah, I was uh, going to say, you're segueing from bear asses, so yeah, be careful. So, <laughs> so um, as everyone knows, the big trope of MMOs, especially wow, is like find bear butts Fetch. or intestines or whatever and you'll like kill a thing and it won't have it and you're like how does that not have a butt right how does that not have a bear ass 
The other day I killed a guy, he, and I, I was hunting for stomachs. And the other day I killed a guy, he dropped five stomachs. I was like, the <laughs> 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 like it made up for all, those, all those years made up for. I was Amazing. like, oh. but he but was the, a cow. I, yeah, I was just gonna say, it's is it like a cow where certain yeah. animals actually do happen to have like four or five bug. stomachs? It was a little bug, roughly half the size of my character, and I was like, a <laughs> god damn, okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, so. somebody, somebody in chat is asking about getting into WoW as like a brand new player. When you buy WoW now, it's like a big pack with all of the expansions except the newest one. Yes. Um, I think you can buy the newest expansion and get everything with it. Question mark. I don't know what the rules are anymore. I, uh, I know that for a time it was you would you could buy like the first three expansions together, and then mm -hmm. but now there's so many expansions, it's crazy. What I will simply say is. Um, what they do every expansion now is they rework characters because they're like on some epic quest to make it so the characters feel exactly like how you think they would feel, whatever the hell that means. They're like, yes, when you're a mage, I want you to like, feel like you're a mage when you're playing a mage. Or if you're like an elemental shaman, like wielding the elements. I'm like, okay, I still don't know what that means exactly, <laughs> but I don't think you guys do either, which is why you keep changing shit. Um, so... Everything changes at the beginning of expansion. So everyone's sort of learning stuff anew anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so going into characters, it's like there is no set rule on how to do things quite yet unless you're really super hyper min-maxing, in which case just go to one of the many websites that will tell you what to do. Um, and with that said, uh, it's just like a new storyline, a new thing. And here's the, here's the good part about WoW. Literally, your character, if you boost, will be 110, which means... <sighs> 15 years of content is not only free for you to do, but easy for you to do because you're so high level. You can go through all the old stuff and experience the things that happened in the past. You can go do the stories. You can literally be like, I'm going to go back to the vanilla storyline and just follow the path of the story leading up to this point. There are plenty of resources out there that will help you do that. And you can go experience all of it. You can go literally the, even though the world it's changes, even though like, like right yeah. now, Silithus, for example, is completely destroyed. Silithus was this crazy zone with like AQ and all these raids and shit, completely destroyed. Even though that's, that's gone, uh, even though Darkshore is destroyed, even though Teldrassil is destroyed, it's and Lord Oz, like, <laughs> war is ravaging the planet, right? Even though all that shit's gone, because there's the Bronze Dragon Flight, which are time travelers, there's literally one in every zone that's like, excuse me, if I you. I want to uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you if you need to go back in time to experience it again, you can. And so you can. And you can go do everything and it's super easy now. So if but, you're like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, you can go experience it and literally stomp it easily. The the problem yeah. I have with the whole bronze dragon flight thing though is that you can only go back and re experience it like in that specific zone, as I recall. Like as soon as you start to even leave that zone, things they're like, oh no, <laughs> we we phased all this out, so you can't you can't do that. I don't Look, know if it's the, still that way. Bronze Dragon Flight works in mysterious ways. <laughs> it, I don't it does. question it. I don't I, question. I just I, I do kind of miss the way that uh, it it used to be when the world was whole before the cataclysm back in the day, <laughs> with with, with I, my vanilla cream added to my wow. Your vanilla cream. That's what it's about. That's right. Yeah. Oh, there's so many people in chat who aren't caught up that are like. What? All of those areas are gone? <laughs> well, I mean, they're ravaged those... by war and cataclysm. So, if I, mean, I think there, it's isn't WoW still free up to like a certain level as it I is? It 20, is. There's like yeah. to twenty, which is fine because right. because the first couple expansions, or I'm sorry, the first couple levels go through that cataclysm stuff, and the opening cataclysm story like is fun now. It uh, is the quest. Yeah. The quest line's good. It is. I, I actually redid, because I have max level characters and got really bored at the end of Legion. Um, actually, got really bored at the end of Draenor, waiting for Legion. But anyway, um, after maxing out all those characters and garrisons and literally only logging on to claim my stuff, I actually went back and, because I hadn't played through any of that content in, I guess, what, that would have been like six years or something. Sure. So I, I started a brand new character on both Alliance side and Horde side to experience like what are new players actually coming back for? Because I remember with, when uh, Wrath of the Lich King came out, I think that's when a big population of people came in, if I recall correctly. And uh, Wrath, the old Wrath babies. Yes, right, I right. Wrath, Wrath babies. babies. They're, yeah. They're the ones who are like, I remember when WoW was good. And it's like, oh, <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, guys. They, like, skipped Sunwell. They're like, what are we here for? Um, yeah, you never had to raid for 40 hours to, like, defeat a boss that dropped one item or bullshit like that. You don't, not like this. Don't, don't, 
Don't You're talk to... about the before times. They were not good. <laughs> long, long ago in the before <laughs> times when we had to get 40 people together online oh, at the same time. time in order to make a raid. You and your 25 people mean nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Um, no, hard pass. Yes, hard pass. <laughs> but I, I did actually, I do agree with you. The Doing those quests now, since the cataclysm has happened, the storyline is good and it is different. That, that was the thing for me is it was almost, it was actually playing a whole different game. Yep. A whole different game. But I do I do long for my classic quests. I, I hated the fact that the Wrath Babies couldn't enjoy the same experience that I had. Just even no, leveling up characters back then. They should be thankful. The original oh, and I'm sure experience they are. was like <laughs> rough. But at the time, it was amazing, right? Like comparatively to everything else that existed, it was amazing. But now looking back, it's like the things we have now are so much better. So mm. I don't take any of that for granted. I'm like, all right, no, I like... The fact that my quest, instead of like killing the same thing 50 times, instead, I ride a giant raptor slash beast <laughs> and throw bombs at them to kill those 50 guys. And it's way more fun. It's like, yeah, that's cool. Mm. So. I just, I. You guys um, talking about classic, wow classic? Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I miss kind of the more focus on lore. I guess, you know, you actually had to read your quest text back when, back in the good old days. And, mm -hmm. and now it's just no like, oh, there, there's, a, no there's, a, there's a dot on the map now built in no one does that the fact that they like like everything's detailed it is exactly like emails from my mom my mom <laughs> now realizes that i won't read the entire text of an email so she puts everything in the subject header line? and ah! yeah, hi mom <laughs> <laughs> the header and she's like yeah, the subject has everything i need to know and i'm like all right cool thanks mom <laughs> like, i love your mom is, they're I'm very mom. detailed they're very detailed messages read a I'm book like, jesse read a book <laughs> <laughs> like thanks mom so I was going to ask about this actually. Are, are you not? Are you not excited for uh, Wild WoW Classic, Jesse? No. Is that what I'm I got not, from that? No, no, I am not. I uh, I know a lot of people are thrilled and ready. I wow. I'm one of those people. Wow. Yeah. Well, did you like? When did you stop playing? I stopped playing uh, during Wrath of the Lich King. Sure. So like that makes sense. Since Wrath, the game has changed tremendously. Like exponential changes where the quality of life in the game is so vastly different from vanilla that like i simply the reminder that i got and i keep saying the story and i'll tell it again <laughs> is when they released molten core for the 10 year anniversary going back and doing that again i was like ah this is why 40 man raids don't exist anymore this is why the combat mechanics don't exist anymore this is why all these things that we thought were normal 15 years ago are garbage town now. And this is why LFR is here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It was an unfortunate mess. I hated it. It took hours and hours and hours. And I was like, man, I like, I like how I can do a raid in like an hour and a half and feel good about myself and not be there for a day. Just like, all right, guys, wipe it. Let's do this again. Like, oh my God, it's stuff's not fun, but I get people who are like, I want the hard. I kind of liked that. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of what I liked about it. They, they, yeah, they want the challenge. They want the they want the experience of like like fighting for levels and shit. Not me. I don't want that at all. I want to be given stuff. I like when Blizzard's like, here, have a purple. I'm like, you know what? Thank you, Blizzard. I, I earned this. That. I think some people no. are forgetting about some of the things that that are kind of, I guess, just overlooked. Just uh, very technical things, like example. Um, now, obviously, almost all things are phased and the servers are connected. Back in vanilla, they were not connected. You were doing PvP, yeah. you knew all the same people. You saw the exact same adversaries all the time. You oh knew who God. to look for, you all knew how to shut down. was like the it place you go weeks. to meet your enemies on the battlefield because you were like, yeah. I know they'll be there today. I'll meet you at dawn. <laughs> I can't talk to you, but I'll meet you at dawn because we don't speak the same language. Yeah, yeah. We just like Uber no go go, and you're like, oh, I know he's talking shit. Cat, 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 cat. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get that son of a bitch. And you're like, what? No, that was also the time when your own faction could talk shit about each other without yes. people knowing. Yes. Because everyone had their own like voice. It was like a different game. It was. It was. Vanilla WoW had like this different. You could see they were they wanted to go in a different direction. Just over the years, shit changed and they skewed off of that. But there was definitely, it's definitely a different experience. I would say, I think Vanilla is going to end up being like Vanilla and maybe Burning Crusade. 
which is my with, hope. That's my hope. Yeah, same. That's what that's, I want. That was my peak WoW days. But like with uh, the mechanics of Lich King, maybe like like a more modern phasing. setup for the UI and mechanically, like it's more future mechanic. I, I mm. think I think that might be because them going back, I think would be insanity. Just yeah, insane. there's certain things that there were in vanilla that I definitely don't want. Right. You know, like, but I do miss, I do miss, that's part of what really turned me off of, to, of, of WoW. And I don't even know if I can necessarily explain why I it d- turned me off, but it was kind of what you, what you guys were talking about. Everything's connected. If I wanted to do a raid, it just queues me up and I automatically join. It's like, it, I just don't feel connected to it. Whereas before, yeah, I was sitting there for like forever looking for a raid. Like who, who, who can I, you know, you who can I raid with if I miss? Oh. Yeah. But at the same time, you had to join a get forced you to join a guild, and then you'd meet people. Otherwise, I would just ne- I just would never talk to anyone in the game. Never knew anyone in the game, and it just it just becomes I'm just leveling my character, and that was kind of lame to me. And also, yeah, I miss I liked the raids being really difficult. Mm. I'm super excited for WoW Classic. First of all, I just unapologetically want to relive being 18 to 20 again. Sure. Um, <laughs> Don't we all? But, yeah. <laughs> But also, I, when I played through, I hit level 60 right as Burning Crusades was coming out. So I never got to do the level 60 oh. raids. So I really wanted to do those. You weren't there for us oh, collecting oh. things for like a year for a war that we didn't oh, know was oh happening. God. If they're going to do vanilla, yeah. <laughs> I'm bring it back. I still have that shit in my bank because I'm afraid one day I'll need it. That's how... <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's cause yeah, that was it's the time true. when in order to go it's to a raid, true. you had to go farm a key and do a dungeon mm-hmm. that let you do a thing that took you to here. And it was but it like made you feel set. special. Oh like, yeah. I did it. Like I'm, I, I, but now it's just like, sign me up. I'm going to like throw me to some place. And I'm like, who are these people? I don't know. Let's do it. <sighs> yeah. I totally, I, I, I feel that way. Exactly. That it, you felt special. Yeah. And the difference is, is that as I've aged up in life, I truly have moved past the point of giving a shit. I'm like, <laughs> I just want to play the game on the time that I have to play the game yeah. and feel like I'm doing something in the game. And when I was, you know, younger and when you're in your like, when you're 18, 19, 20, you have the time to devote to being Yeah, a, that's like, totally Yeah, right. let's do this. I'm going to spend a week just doing this one thing. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's different experience, but I think it has to do with the different people and the different time, right? I, so I, I yeah. totally agree. I think, Socially, it's very different now. It's uh, you know people have to, need to be able to jump in and jump out because the audience they're catering to not only are, are the people who are just coming in, but then again, they're all connected online, social media, and blah blah blah. We've had this discussion on the show before. Time is sure. limited because you're mm-hmm. spending your online life in so many different spaces now, not just in gaming. Where before it was like, oh, you're using the internet. What are you doing? gaming now it could be any i'm watching someone else play a game that's what i'm doing with my you know so there's yeah lots of different avenues that weren't really available i guess at that time for us and socially it is very different you want to feel special but at the same time some people just wanted to get in feel like they oh hey I, i completed these quests i got my little dopamine and i got my little fix and now i can go do something else right i've always felt i feel both sides like even though Metzen's gone now, I always felt that Aww. as him being the head of all oh, this nonsense, Chris. it was this idea that like Metzen just like Thrall. God, this is the nerdiest fucking thing I've ever said. <laughs> Metzen just like Thrall. Because Thrall, the character in the game, like <laughs> aged up, right? Like to the point where like he becomes bald and he has a fucking family and that's the whole thing. Metzen, just like him, continually tried to age up the game with like as the audience who's playing us still plays it's with us true. as it's they true. age up from being teenagers to adults to like people and families, we need to change the game to correspond with them. And I always mm-hmm. felt like that's sort of what he was doing and his I character, agree. cause Metzen was thrall, right? Metzen's character in the game aged up too, to the point of like, literally he's been like gone for an expansion and a half. He was like, bye bitches. Um, I feel like, that's sort of the idea. Now that Metz is no longer there, I wonder what the process of the game is going to be like. Where are they going to take the game? But for a good while, it felt like like they tried to make it easier and more friendly and more like it was one of those things where it was the time you spent in the game did not reflect your rewards in the game. And there's, so, I, I, who knows? I, know. I would say behind the scenes, there's a little bit more of a different kind of demand as well because now, if you think about Blizzard as a company, 
They've got Overwatch. They don't need the cash cow that WoW once mm. was to support other games and other development. Now they have Overwatch. <laughs> GG. <laughs> they can do, they can have, you know, have a little more freedom, do, you know, cater to more audiences instead of having to worry about if we piss off our core demographic of WoW gamers. Everything's over. It is well, all I'm, over. I'm, Everyone I'm, loses their jobs. Sure. Everybody's unemployed. StarCraft is dead. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with Blizzard is that their core, de- this has always mystified me and I would love to just get in there and look at their statistics <laughs> and numbers. Their core demographic, I can't figure out what it exactly is because for me, the core demographic of WoW overlays with the core demographic of like Overwatch with, with Diablo. Like, uh, it's like Blizzard has a demographic of people who play Blizzard games that cycle through all the Blizzard games when a new one comes out and they cannibalize their own players to play a new thing. And I'm always curious about that because they're like, oh, yeah. Also, if you get this new expansion, you get stuff for these other games. And it's right. like, oh, OK. So it's I'm fascinated by those that information. I'd love to see those numbers because so I've high. never truly understood who the core audience is because when you go to BlizzCon or whatever everybody it's so yeah it's so vast and so wild and different and it's like it's it's such a wide spectrum of people that i would love to know what exactly the audience is and also i'd love to know how much of that audience was like destiny 2 fuck yeah i would love to know how that translated over yeah man i have never touched that tab on my my battle net app (laughs) not even once if you want to get me all like really excited about shit, sh- send me just pages of statistics, like infographics. I will look at that and be like, oh, no. So we, we want the Vivendi stats. We we want um, the, the Bobby Kotek oh, stats. We want everything. <laughs> Give it all I love to that us. stuff. Yeah. It's mm. one of my real true passions. You should like have been a data scientist, Jesse. Just go work for them via data scientist yeah, and the, math the part, answers. So here's my problem. I want to be a writer, but I don't want to write. I just want to have story ideas. I want to be like a mathematician, but I don't want to do math. I just want to like look at the results. I want to like be a scientist, but I don't want to like do like the paperwork. I just want to like experiment with shit. I'm like a half asser of everything. That's my problem. That's that's the biggest problem I have. Good news, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I just want to mix shit together and like wear a lab coat. Is that the too Jesse wrong? tubes are open again. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up about WoW and Blizzard. Oh. Oh, you're good. I'd, you're good. Um, I heard, heard the name Bobby Kotick in a long time. Well, that was just that was a What's period it? where things went it's like him, between him and Dustin Browder. There were there were phases that we went through with with WoW. It's like every new person that kind of came in anywhere near the mix when Activision stepped in, you could just sense change was in the air, and we all had a lot of opinions. And those did opinions people not like Bobby Kotick because he said Bobby Kotick, and I'm like instantly had this like weird reaction. I'm like. I don't like, like, that's like a negative reaction. I can't really remember what he did. He was part of, like, the Activision merger, like you're saying. And that's all it was, for the most okay. part. It was, it, well, he would show up to the convention, and people were just like, what is he doing there? He's ruining our stuff. <laughs> he's cutting budget. We know he's cutting budget. All they want to do is plug more money into their console games. Rawr. There was just, you know, it's the same thing that happens when you love anything. It's someone else coming yeah. in and messing with your stuff. It's like, no, this is our baby. We've been here since the beginning. You can't touch it. Hashtag <laughs> Star Wars. I mean, that's what it all is. <laughs> yeah. That's really what it is, is every, every time someone comes in, and this is, I'm guilty of it. I've constantly complained over the years, been like, this thing Blizzard is so dumb. You know who's to blame? Activision. I, it, who the fuck knows? I don't know if I know. Like, I don't have an answer for you, but it just seems like that's the person I, like, the you got to find, that's yeah. Blame, right? Because it Someone's wasn't happening before they came in. So clearly they are the reason that this is this is going south. You know, it couldn't be yeah, for that, any that, other reason. That probably isn't true. No, right? but it's it probably because they- like guttural, you have a guttural instinct. Like, it wasn't like this before. And then Activision showed up. And now it's like this. So it must be the case. It's like, and what? it's just, you know. Wow, it, got a little bit sucky for a half. second. Let's it's, instead of blaming Activision, it might have been. Oh, hey, half the WoW staff actually moved over to start working on the new Diablo game, and uh, yeah. yeah, we we just we don't care outside influence. This is all the information that we have. We're using the data available to us because Blizzard don't tell us anything until things are ready. So we 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 yeah. couldn't make uh, logical conclusions we couldn't jump to those no we're just yeah irrational i think it's it's fair that it feels that way but i think it's also fair like jesse's saying that it's probably like you realistically have no idea i feel like people do that i'll see people do that with youtubers that i know where they like jump to all these like something will happen they're like i know it was this person that they're friends with that did this and i'm like i'm just looking i'm like that's not right but like, like that's so off 
but, well, but they just don't know anything about the context so they just have to like try yeah, to figure out what true. happened during yeah, e3 that's kind of the the thing that happened with us with the microsoft buyout of all the indie studios that were making games that we really enjoyed it's just like great microsoft just bought them enjoy you guys are going to be dead in like a year it's like technically we don't really have too many we have like one or two reasons to think that that could happen maybe three or four um <laughs> mm. Ooh. Sorry. Oh, 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 oh. his dog no his dog went to the door someone's there oh, okay i was like i was like uh, oh do we get to see <laughs> no it's just one of those things that i think everyone wants to scapegoat on something because they don't know information so they just guess what like I'm intrigued, Star Wars they're like it's Disney that's causing it it's like George Lucas wanted to make it about fucking midichlorians y'all that's never that was not going to be good so you know everyone everyone always has the midichlorians angry issues about shit like and and, and you know PG's right you know I, I I'm thankful enough to know a lot of people who work at Blizzard so I know like a lot of behind the scenes shit that I'll never say but Every theory about what goes on there is wrong. Every single one. <laughs> all the time. And even I know shit, and I'm like, I have my own theories about stuff that I don't know about. So, like, you know, you're never going to know things, and everyone's going to always wonder and speculate. And that's just life, man. That's just how shit works. So Then they put up stuff it. when when you go to visit that you shouldn't pay attention to, but it grabs your attention anyway. And, and you're like, that's actually, it's not something that ever came to fruition but they had it on a board because if anyone saw it, they thought that you know, they threw them off the scent. I remember yep. 3D butts was what was uh, <laughs> what was posted uh, the last time I went through the WoW area, and I was just like, huh? huh. It was I, on a uh, whiteboard, and I'm like, clearly that's the next big thing. There's a, uh, and you know what? It, I mean, look at Overwatch. The design on that mm -hmm. is they literally designed those butts to be perfect butts. Every <laughs> everyone's butt, male or female, is flawless. They are. Perfectly designed buds. Um, but yeah, I just, it's one of those things that I think um, everyone needs to like chill out about when it comes to speculation and shit. I don't know how we got on this, but like, you know, it's okay to be it's concerned <laughs> or wonder or take guesses. But when your life becomes like, I think that this is a thing, so I'm going to go full ham on this is the reason why and like devote posts and commentary and videos to speculation. So much energy. Or you could have been out. playing a game. <laughs> yeah. Just enjoy, y'all. Just enjoy. Well, with that or being said... Or just quit said, playing WoW, like I did. <laughs> yeah. Whichever. Whichever. But and I mean, like, any game. Any game or yeah. any... Like, yeah, there's so much that you just don't have to do. Yeah. And, and that sounds to me like a good uh, quitting WoW. A good segue into uh, going to a break. Because <laughs> we're going <laughs> to have one this episode. Um, this episode of the Co-Optional Podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. If you go over sure to squarespace.com slash co you can save 10% off your first order. Uh, and they have domains. They have they even do email marketing now. I was shocked by that. I actually huh. did not know that they did that. So now it so literally is one stop Squarespace shop. website to spam people? You can. You can. Oh, my yeah. God. Can I... <laughs> Just to, all right. I don't know how email marketing actually works, but can I just send like a gift to a thousand people? Is no one subscribe button. <laughs> you know, no, no one subscribe button. I think you should try. That sounds like uh, a you know what? I'm gonna. I would love a gift from jessiecox.com. Is that what it is? It is jessiecox.com. <laughs> Great. I would love a gift. <laughs> all I'm right. Send you, that gift. you get a gift. You get a gift. <laughs> Everyone gets a gift. All right, guys. We will be back in a few minutes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is Co-Optional Podcast with our spot, the Squarespace, done by our lovely Brooke. Dodger. I, people Aww. get weird when I call you Brooke. I should, <laughs> I should never call you Brooke. People I don't do know think why. that's weird. They do think it's I weird. I don't think it's weird. People, <laughs> we have no names. It's real life. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break, guys. Today's episode of the Co-Optional Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether it's a domain, website, or store, make your next move with Squarespace. Now, Sam's birthday is coming up, and I want to make a site that just constantly rotates embarrassing pictures of him from the last 30 years of his life. Fortunately, doing a good goof is a snap with Squarespace. Just plug your images into one of their many award-winning templates, and you've got a beautiful website that's ready for that huge projector you ordered. You know, for movies. Definitely not for horrifying your husband. And should something go wrong on the big day, they've got fantastic customer service right there, ready to help. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code COOPTIONAL to get 10% off your first prank. I mean, purchase. Squarespace. Make it. 
Welcome, welcome back to the oh. Co-Optional Podcast. Did I catch you guys talking? Yeah, we yes. We did exactly what we said we wouldn't do, and we failed. We were like, <laughs> Give you the count in. <laughs> Didn't about matter. A ago, about a minute ago, we were like, all right, we have to shut up. And then we just started talking about rating on Twitch and how much we love it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you um, tweeted about that, Jesse, actually. I think I love, something about ratings. I love, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big Twitch person. I'm, then again, I'm not a big YouTube person. I'm a big Jesse person. Uh, but when, when I'm on Twitch, I find that the idea of like, I never did rating before until maybe the last month, but like going and finding a person who's in the same category as you that has like 13 viewers and bombarding them with thousands is like a really, really fun moment because it's like, you can see that's like real joy. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Yeah, and it's it's just like a great thing, and I, I, you know, it's it's something that you do not get anywhere else. So, I think it's very very cool that that, you know, Twitch does that. So, you know, that's all, that's all I was saying. I like it. Okay. I like it. It's good. The community. I like it. <laughs> yeah, the community part of Twitch is fun. It's something that YouTube doesn't have anymore. You can't even like. It used to be you could like people's videos on YouTube, and then like everyone would see that. But now that doesn't really do anything. So I, I miss that kind of part of YouTube where it's like, man, I want to like you know, highlight this guy's first person's content or something. And you can't, but you can totally do that on Twitch in a very, very direct way. Yeah. <clears throat> it's really cool. I've, I've gone down like essentially the Twitch version of a YouTube vortex where you're just like clicking on a video and then it recommends a video and you're like, Oh, and you click on that video and it recommends a video. Like you can do that with hosting now where you'll click on a channel and it'll be hosting a different channel and you're like, oh, and then you'll click on that channel. <laughs> and then like when they're they host someone host channel, yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what game are we playing now? Yeah. I think that's why I'm so upset that Twitch gave people the option to rebroadcast or to like play videos of their own because it destroys that for me. Like I like the idea of going and finding someone that leads to someone else that does a thing. Thankfully, but most people don't do that where they play videos of their old shit. But like, I don't know. I always, I dislike that when I go, oh, someone's online. I go to it. It's like, this is a rebroadcast. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's good in the long run for like streamer sanity though. I feel like because sure. it's an option for somebody to be like, I can take a break and just put a, a rebroadcast up. Like I don't ha have to stream right uh, now. Of Sam in you know. a chair. Rebroadcast. <laughs> like I and I get that. I get that. It's like there's. It, I think that it's the fine line you have to walk in a situation like this, where it's like, yeah, of course, I need time for me, so I'm gonna rebroadcast, and people can watch that, and I can still like earn a living. Mm. But I think that then chips away a little bit at the community aspect of like, I'm not online right now, but my friend is, and you really should go support them, kind of thing. And so yeah. it's one of those things that. Obviously, there's no good answer because, like, you still need to make a fucking living. But there's the idea that, like, over time, I, I, I'm one of those people who constantly sees, like, the bad and, and like, corporate <clears throat> shit. And I'm like, I don't want this to end up like YouTube in two years. So, you know. It probably just, will. If I'm it does, somebody else will make something else and it'll just continue to turn into new things. And Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 sometimes I have the tendency to make executive decisions on things without asking or consulting other people. Some of you may have noticed, well, I know some of you have noticed that I have changed uh, Dodger's icon on the Co-Optional podcast because I feel like she streams more than she posts to YouTube. Yeah, so I, I noticed just, that and I was like, sick. I've actually been <laughs> to ask for that to happen. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Okay, excellent. So, I, I read yeah, the situation correctly. <laughs> okay, because yeah. I just felt... Why am I pushing people that in that direction when they, you know, could be enjoying a platform where she's more active on the regular? So I was just yeah. like, well, let me just push people in this direction. So oh, I, I did something right. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So that's why she's yeah, listening to Dex Bonus now because that's her channel. <laughs> It's pretty crazy how many people that used to do YouTube mainly now seem to be Twitch focused. I know a bunch of people mm -hmm. like that. Um. I think I think that the, from a person who is does both and lives a terrible life because of it, um, <laughs> I think the idea is that 
when it comes to format that like say yourself or Gerard or the people who do <clears> like, <throat> I'm going to give you an infotainment kind of thing. Um, that is like a really good platform for YouTube. Like YouTube yeah. is a platform for that. Yeah. When it comes to let's plays and things of that nature, it's just simply oh. easier to do it on Twitch. Gosh, like yes. the amount of effort and work and community interaction is like so vastly different than on YouTube. But the problem that I suffer from is like, God, do I like the idea of doing a thing and then shutting down for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I like the idea of going really into like, I'm going to give you an hour of like top Jesse and then turning it off and uploading that to YouTube rather than like, all right, let's stream. And for the first two hours, I'm going to be really energetic and like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm be like, click, click, click. I just oh, like, God. I don't know. I, I hate that about, about like long streams. The problem is when I stream, like, all right, today, two hours is what I'm going to do. Two hour stream. And then it's like 10 hours later. And I'm like, what? It, can, For me, it really can opposite. be exhausting. Go ahead, Dodger. It's, it's just the opposite for me. Like for YouTube, it, it's, I'm playing a thing, but then once I'm done playing it, there's so, there's so many more steps. Oh, I agree. Edit it, agree. Edit, highlight yeah. things, upload the thing. I have to hope encoding. that it processes correctly and maybe it won't. And I'll come into the office later and it'll have like stopped at 90%. And I'll have to do it again. Right. Like that whole like frustrating process was never fun for me. I've never super enjoyed editing and I've always been very um, like community interaction focused. And like you just said, like that's so much better on Twitch. You mm -hmm. get that like conversational aspect with your community, which is like way more beneficial for me. Um, and yeah, I like that I can just be like, all right, we're streaming and I'm, <laughs> I'm in it and we're having fun and we're talking and then the stream is over and I can go be with my baby or I can like, you know, do whatever else I needed to do sure. like, mm -hmm. done, you know, I feel like that's totally fair. I, I I'm kind of the opposite too, though. I, I like, I enjoy putting something together for a long time and then being like, it's, it, it, it just almost, it's almost like a self-conscious thing where it's like, I have to make this as good as it's like, I know I, as good as I can do so that that's the only time I can release it. Mm -hmm. um, and I enjoy editing and all that stuff. Twitch was always kind of intimidating to me because you can't edit it. Like it's, I, I'm so used to filming and like being able to, oh, that take wasn't good or whatever. I'm also not good at Twitch in the sense that I can't, I feel like some people are really good at just being chill on stream. I don't know how to turn off the YouTuber oh, when I'm on yeah. stream. Well, it's, it's, so, it's live action. It's, it's theater versus film is what it is. I mean, that's literally what it breaks yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. The film people who are like, I like the idea that I can take time with it and craft a thing and I can present it the way I want it to be presented to the world and I release it and everyone enjoys it. Right. And then there's the live actor version, which is like, I like the interaction with the crowd. I like the feeling of being live. I like that you get lost in a thing for a few hours and then be done with it. And like, if you've ever done a play, you know, when you're done with the play, you're like, oh, uh, God. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so you, 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 and that's when you're like, fuck it, I'm getting a drink. And you, and it's the, there's two different vibes. And for mm -hmm. me, I like both. The problem is doing both is like an ungodly impossibility. So I'm yeah. constantly like in the waves of, of in between. Um, I think the, pro the, the the difficulty also is people who try to do both where they're on Twitch and then they try to take that to YouTube. It's like, here's all the <laughs> things for posterity because you're interacting with people, you have shit popping up on your screen, like all this other stuff that at the live event is amazing. But it makes no sense when, in post. Yeah, when you watch <laughs> on a video, you're like, well, I feel like I'm missing out now. Like that's the vibe people get. They're like, I don't want to watch this because I feel like I'm missing out on the event. And like, it's it's a... Very, it's like if there was a perfect way to do it, which is why my streams are so subdued, which I don't have shit pop up on the screen. I don't have because I'm like, if I'm playing a game, I'm playing the game because I'm like, in my mind, I could upload this to YouTube in the future and I don't want the YouTube people to hate me. But either then, the people on Twitch are like, well, he's not even interacting with us. It sucks. I hate it. Yeah. I'm gonna I, I, <laughs> what, my, one of my things I did to solve that dilemma in my head was just make sure that every stream has the chat on it so when i upload it if i'm interacting with the chat people can see what i'm interacting with mm. that's, but I mean, that's it's just a compromise well, that's not I screen guess. real estate you're messing with <laughs> yeah no. so i do have I'm, to like make a border and then people yeah. people are like sometimes people are like i don't like your border and i'm just like this is the way that i decided to do it i like it this way so i'm just gonna leave it that way yeah. i don't like your border but, 
<laughs> like, that's really picky. It's like, hmm. Your border is no think... good. I mean, I guess because the game is like smaller, but I also don't want to cover up the game. Right, I want it to like right. be its own thing. So I don't know. Well, I think, and again, I think that like long, like long creation time, very well thought out. Again, like going back to the people in this office, for example, like there's definitely a place on YouTube for gamers for that content. And I've always been like, I would yeah. love to do something like that. But the minute you jump into that, let's play for a you're like lost to time because there's not people love that like content's coming every day we got a new thing we got like where's that episode you got this thing it's like i'm trying to do other things guys i want to like branch out and like no fuck you where's the next episode you're like <laughs> <laughs> plus it can be diminishing returns things don't stop popping up in like your email your inbox your notifications it's like oh how, how in the world did i manage to miss this episode being put up it's like oh i don't know because we're on let's play number 537 right. of this 30 um, hour game northern I, uh, lion <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally I'm in the awe same, though there's so many different types of video formats that would take a lot more time and a lot more attention that i think sound so fun and i think i I could potentially do a good job with it, but I don't I don't enjoy the editing process enough. And I also am the sort of person who, and I think this is another reason why I really thrive in a live format is that I second guess everything that I edit always. Yes. I'll like edit something up completely and it'll sit there and I won't upload it because I'm like, it's bad though. It's bad, right? It's not a good video. I'm just not gonna upload it. I'm and the just comments gonna are forever. Up. They're gonna tell I, me it's bad. I've They're gonna timestamp that. that it was bad. <laughs> Yeah, I've done that so many times and it just, in the end, I've just realized like, maybe I just don't have the right personality for like crafting a video, well, like and it, crafting it, like, a, like a video with a lot of time and attention to it, you it know? It doesn't help that the energy required to go into editing all of that in the end just yields you so much less money. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's really so true. <laughs> now with the way YouTube is, yeah. I had, to, I had to re-encode the last episode of the podcast, I think three or four different times there was a, an audio visual sync that happened in our last Twitch stream. And I had the live recording, but I, I'm, I'm a stickler. I'm just like, no, this process should work. Why isn't this working? Because I just wanted right. to make sure that certain things were fail safe. So I exported it out to YouTube same situation it was even worse on that take than it was and it would just get like a tiny bit worse every single time and i'm just like what is happening so i spent literally more time on trying to get the last vod of the podcast out for probably zero dollars zero cents than it would have taken me just to make another podcast episode which people might have enjoyed more i don't it's know it's also a crazy thing that i think Hard. the more we do stuff the more perfectionist we get and yes. I've, I've slowly come to the realization over the years that most people do not give a shit if it's perfect. Unless you're doing, like, the 26-part retrospective on Final Fantasy VI, in which case, like, yeah. they be perfect. If you're doing a Let's Play, in my mind, I was like, okay, I want to give them the story experience, but I want to also explore. And I want to do this, but I also want to do this. And, like, uh, you know, that kind of idea. I go look at some other really popular Let's Plays. People are, like, dying every three minutes. Dudes are like, <laughs> it's all chopped up and edited. No one gives a fuck. And I'm like, no one cares. No one gives a shit. What? Like, all this extra tenderness I'm putting into this, no one gives a fuck. I'm like, no. all right, screw it. Let's go to town. So, yeah. yeah. So games. Yeah, sometimes YouTube definitely <laughs> feels like the extra effort you put in doesn't always pay off. So I, I definitely always. can feel like that, with, with especially, yeah. Yeah, every, I, I feel like the every, only, the only sorry go ahead no, uh, uh, no. I feel like the only reason that like my my main channel is still like functioning the way it does is just because I've done it for so long that like that's just the way people expect it I almost feel like I can't change any of it because I've done it from it's like pushing 10 years now so if I change the way I do it I feel like that's what may, will make people upset and this is why I think a lot of people, especially the huge YouTubers, the ones who you always see this happen, it happens all the time, they do a thing, they get caught in the cycle of that thing, and then they rebel so hard against that mm. shit. Like, they're like, oh, sure, I was the scary game guy. Now I'm going to, <laughs> like, incredibly politically incorrect videos because I need to get away from <laughs> that shit. Like, that's just the way shit happens. And you're like, I mean... I kind of understand rebelling. Like it's like being with really controlled, like controlling parents. 
Like once you once once you break free, you're like, fuck it, I'm going wild. And I think <laughs> yeah. a lot of people have that idea of I've been doing the same shit for ten years and I need to change. So my change is gonna be like I did video game stuff. Now I'm going to do travel vlogs. It's like, what? <laughs> I don't know how to react, but like, you know, you need I, to do that. I've, I've for a, a, the longest time, I kind of unintentionally like fell into a family friendly like channel for various different reasons. But then that kind of became who I was. I can't lie over the years. I always, I always sit there and question. It'll be nice from like, you know what? The next video is just going to be raunchy. Like I'm just going to make a raunchy <laughs> video out of nowhere. Fuck. And, but it, it, I always fall back. I always fall back on not doing it because I don't want to like disappoint people that are like expecting some one thing. I don't know. It's a weird like compromise you have to make creatively you're that, with. You're the like, child keeping... star trying to break out and do other things. I'm an adult. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> That's I'm, I mean, what it's like. yeah. Yeah. I mean, realistically, yeah, the only reason why I didn't. On that horse, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I fell into the no swearing because my when I first started, I was pretty young. I was like 18, or, I guess. So my parents would watch my videos, and I didn't want them to see me swear, so I didn't swear. But then it, then it, then it became like a thing where just people expected me not to. So now I guess I, if I do it because, like, you know, it, there's, there's not a whole lot of alternatives for people that want to just be like, hey, my kid can just watch this guy and not worry too right. much about it. So I kind of like, I, I, I guess I've never left it that because, I don't know, I don't want to like, you know, I mean, people have been subscribing for that for so long. It would be right. kind of weird, but. Don't alienate yeah, your a... core demographic. What's our yeah. core demographic? Let's break it down, data. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to never curse on YouTube at all, but I did curse on my streams. And so people would come to my streams and be Shocked. like, what? <gasps> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now. And I'm the same way. My parents still watch a lot of stuff that I make. And sometimes my mom will like tune into my streams and stuff. And I'll occasionally get like a, you know, I mean, you don't, my dad literally had the, you don't need to curse to be cool, honey. Talk with me like a couple of years ago. And I was oh, like, yeah. daddy. <laughs> But it is a scientific 29. fact that people who people is, need to curse to be yeah, cool. It's like, a, literally, that's literally what it was. It's a, it's a scientific <laughs> fact that people who swear have a have a wider vocabulary. People used to challenge. It's like, oh, well, if you swear, obviously you just have a limited vocabulary and you use filler words. And, and it's actually studies show that we have a wider vocabulary. It's because we have more swear words that we can say. I guess. That's right. Yeah, I couldn't tell you how many times I'm like writing something for a video and i'm like man it'd be so great if i could drop an f-bomb right here that would be so good <laughs> and i just can't get past it did you ever <laughs> just do the bleep have you ever i done... have before yeah but okay. i use it pretty sparingly i, I don't know the golf swing <laughs> i'll be real if yeah. you don't swear you're missing out on good punches to sentences or like yeah a good, it's like true a good sometimes a good f-bomb really sends home the message yeah because right? that's the thing it's it's like some people only swear when they're angry because they want it to be like very clear that I'm I'm serious right now. Like I'm, yeah. I'm you know, but like it, it works with comedy too, where it's like, especially if someone you expect aren't expecting to swear, if they swear, it's like, whoa, that was really like noticeable. Like that was something that was worth acknowledging X to an extra amount. That was a like weird sentence, but. How I might say, don't fucking spend $60 on We Happy Few considering it should never have left early access. Was that shocking? <laughs> That's what I hear. Is yeah. that the point home? Excellent. Oh my god. We happy is few. It... Yay, we, we get to talk about games it's... now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, no, so... you're fine. Oh my god. So we happy few. Uh I've been playing on the channel. I played it on a stream. I uh will simply say I enjoy the hell out of it, but it is unfinished and it is like I got a bug. Does it technically time. have like the story in it? Yes, now? there's a story in it now. Okay. It's got three chapters. It uh still has that sort of open world sneak around vibe where you're trying to survive. You have to eat and drink and sleep and all that stuff. Um, but with all that said, it's still got like voice lines will be cut off halfway through. Uh, when I talk to some characters, they will just start dancing for no reason and just start doing a little <laughs> jig like they're trying to move but they can't not move. Um, in one of the videos I did, uh, I tried to enter a house, and the people were like, oh, my God, you're trying to enter our house? And I just sat down in a chair, and the main character that you can play one of his abilities, he sits in a chair, he opens up a newspaper, and everyone's like, oh, he must be a normal person. So I sat in the chair, <laughs> in the house, opened the paper, sat there, and they're like, okay. And then they turned this around. This guy seems fine. 
and I knocked both of them out in their house and then like dragged them into their own house and like explored. It's got a lot of like weird jank to it mm. that definitely feels like this is a title that for 30 bucks is like would be a great indie dev title. Like this is fun and Except I don't expect it to be perfect. Not 30 bucks. But they're like, it's $60 and, and a $20 to- season pass. Yeah, like there's a, there's definitely a lot to it that's missing. I love the vibe. I love the 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 world they've created. There's some spooky weird shit. Like I went exploring in one of the videos and literally ended up in the middle of a town where there's like a box surrounded by weird pink spray paint shit oh and it's my. like this is the witch's box. Don't touch this box. If you touch this box, <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm like what the fuck is a witch's box? And so, of course, <laughs> you open this box. And once you open, it's like, come back in two days. I'm like, what does that mean? So like, there's weird shit that seems crazy and fun. And there's a lot of mystery and intrigue. And there's a lot of cool subtext to what's going on. There's this amazing world building thing happening. I love the world. The world itself is great. It's like, you know, Germany won World War II, so you're in this Orwellian 1984 meets Clockwork Orange violence kind of world. Right. It could have been, there's just so many things, like, I'm, I'm holding myself back because I really want to rage about this game. Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's, I, I, I can understand oh. how, like, I can understand how if you are, if this was going to be your hot jam, this is, there's a lot to rage about here. Oh, For yeah. me, on my end, now that I've accepted the weird bugs and like jank that's going to happen, I'm fine. Like I'm enjoying the story that's happening, but like, it's not, I can safely say it's not worth 60 bucks. No. Like it's the price tag they have right now is too high. It's yeah. just too high. I'm, I think I saw. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Oh no, I'm, I'm going to go into a spiel. So you go right on ahead. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I'll try not to, to go no, on a spiel as fine. well. I, I think it was Jim Sterling. I saw who posted a clip of, a character like just sitting down and he was just like floating away. Yeah. Yeah. To like a bench. And then he almost made it to a bench, but then didn't Didn't quite. He just sort of like just right next to the bench. It's pretty funny. Happened to me. Yeah. I was also just, I was also really disappointed. I I had this game on my radar. I'm, I don't know about you guys. I'm so over early access games. I'm just over them. So, so I've been waiting for it to be done. I really, so it was really disappointing that it's out. It's finished, but it's still basically early access. I hope that it gets, Yeah. I hope it gets a um, a uh, what's the name of that space game that just got patched? No Man's Sky. Um, no Man's Sky. Yeah, I hope it yeah. gets a No Man's Sky type patch, and I will definitely come back I'm and sure play it. Sure, it will. It, 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 it I, will I, have to. It I love have to. I love the trippiness of the game. I'm I re- I love trippy games. Like LSD Dream Emulator is one of my favorite games to just put Trippy. on and play. Yeah. Like like so I was super stoked for this whole idea. Like you're talking about the whole, like post World War II thing and everybody's on drugs. So there's like this trippy aspect to it too. There's like horror aspect, but yeah, if it's just super broken, I won't, I won't play it. Well, The thing is, it's not super broken. It's just that it's, it's sort of like, except that it can, be. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's not broken. It's immersion still breaking game. Um, I guess it depends on what you expect. Like for me, when I turn a corner and I see trees floating out in the sky, and not like anywhere. I think that's fucking hilarious. And I'm like, maybe that's the drugs. Me. Yeah, that was my joke. I was like, these drugs are fucking me up. But like, <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's one of those things where if you're like, if it's your job to to review a game, there's a lot in this thing that is reviewable as like, oh, yeah. they did not fix shit in this. It's an indie yeah. game trying to cop out a, a AAA price is kind of what it is. And I'm just well, it was Kickstarted. Okay, and- so. I need to I need to hold it back. I need to hold it back. Yeah, I need no, to bring no, it back. You could just go, maybe. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm down. Look, I'm here for it. I'm sorry. Point. Like, yeah, I'm, dude, like, I'm an okay. enabler. Okay, so <laughs> compulsion game. compulsion did um contrast. I don't know if you guys remember contrast. It was it, I do. The, contrast I was great. Was a lovely game. I, and I thought, you know, I was like, wow, Compulsion have so much potential to, to make a better game. And so, you know, they started working on this. We see the thing coming out, like, you know, Kickstarter, early access. And, you know, we see the initial trailer and we're like, oh, you know, hey, this looks like it's going to be really good. We thought it was going to be one thing. It kind of no man's skied its way into not quite being that thing. But here's the thing is when Gearbox publishes it. So Gearbox sure. has went from developing games to publishing game games only in the span of three years time. So keep in mind, what, what were their previous successes, really? Uh, Gearbox as a publisher, what well, we had that um, Duke Nukem World Tour DLC thing that came out or something that they published. 
not quite hitting the mark. Um, they did Hello Neighbor, brought that to retail. The, I guess I, the one thing they did do successfully is they brought Fortnite to retail when they partnered up with Epic for that. But that's because it was Fortnite. Enjoy yeah, yeah, the hard... Yeah, it was majorly popular. It's a, it's a very hard yeah. sell, Fortnite. Mm. So I don't think that they had, you know, their work cut out for them or anything. But Randy Pitchford, three years ago, I remember him saying, it's like, oh, well, when we go into publishing, we just want to be the most easy publisher to work with. One of their first actions as a publisher when gearbox jumped onto this was to take the kickstarter uh like big deluxe collector's edition and take the game out of it and they're like oh it's a time capsule it's like and their reasoning was we don't want people to have to double dip when the game actually launches so we'll take the game that people kickstarted out of the collector's edition what? That doesn't make any sense. What? <laughs> Literally no I, sense. So they so th- let me get this straight. They 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 kickstarted the collector's edition, which included the game, and then they just the publisher decided to take like they like, renege on that basically. Yes. Well, uh, they, they just, took the game part out of it. The rest of the stuff remained, and they they even came came to you know forward with it, and they're like, yeah, sure, we made a mistake. Oops, are bad. But there, there are still remnants of that mistake even happening now. On launch, a lot of people who did do the Kickstarter thing, their keys weren't actually working um, to get their mm. redeem their digital stuff on Steam. Some people who were early access people, their Steam keys also didn't update. So people were getting screwed on the launch. Now, all of these things said, and I, you know, I'm just again conspiracy theories. It's like it seems as soon as Gearbox stepped into something, it's like, hey, we're going to publish your game. Not only did price go like whew, triple a price it's like yep, pay 60 yeah. bucks for something that doesn't feel finished but the support has been kind of garbage i should say well we have frame drops all over the place on pc and on console that's the whole thing mm. and on console this has been a pretty crappy launch yeah I, i'm just I mean, gonna put it out there there's, but this is like I, I mean, look, if you uh, going back to, to the idea of the Kickstarter, it started on Kickstarter. And this was a project like we're going to kickstart this thing or do this whole thing. Since then, Microsoft has its hands on it. Gearbox has been yeah. involved. Like all of these companies have been like, we like you basically much like No Man's Sky. People <laughs> bought into the hype and the idea without oh. an actual product. And I feel like, unfortunately, the push by them to do whatever is what has given us what we have. Like, there are a lot of cooks in this kitchen, and it seems like the reason why the price is where it's at, the reason why it was pushed out, it's had two launches. It had one launch that was like, everyone thought that was the real game survival launch. survival game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what happened was, is it had the intro that they hyped up at, at the Xbox conference, and then, like, you played it, it was a survival game. You're like, what the fuck? And they're like, oh, no, 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 that's not what the game is. It is this thing. That's just the early version. And I was like, I thought that was the launch version. So, so did I. Then they have this new version. And so I feel like all these people have been messing with this because they took an idea and they're like, well, the kids like this, so make it this. And yeah, I think it's just Focus behind the scenes. Groups. Behind the scenes, I'm sure it's been a mess. And I, I feel bad for the actual devs because... Like, and that's where I'm at too, is I feel yeah, bad I for the devs because I, I feel like what we were see- shown in the initial trailers, what we were even shown very early on in early access was kind of like where they were going. I understand when publishers step in, they want to make changes. Taking the actual game out of a, <laughs> a Kickstarter game, you know, that's a bit weird. But on, on top of that, there were other things like, uh, do you remember like the, how the environment was uh, procedurally generated prior? It's like it all looked very samey. Now upon launch, it actually does look a bit better. It's more colorful in its areas. You know, there's nuance sure. to it. It's like you get that it's kind of a controlled state. So sure, things should look a bit samey from street to street, you know, if you want to keep up with the sort of, I don't know, I, I hesitate to use the word communist, but if you want to think, you know, Orwellian 1984, you know, you are kind of going right. that way where everything short, sort of should kind of look the same. So. I will say the game is definitely more filled out than it was in early access. And story-wise, narratively, it is so much more than it was. But it's just, it's not, (laughs) it it is a No Man's Sky situation of, I was thinking it was going to be this, it's that, with a $60 price tag stamped onto it and a $20 season pass stamped onto it. And yet launch day comes. The message is so confusing. confusing It it is. 
It's yeah. like, is this a stealth game? Is it a survival game? Oh, we've got some crafting. What's happening over here? But in the end, actually, the story is actually sort of what carries it. And it's like that could have been done for less money than all of these other things combined. Right? And stealth is I, bad in this game. Yeah, can I ask ahead. a question? Oh, my God. The stealth thing? <laughs> Y'all? I got yelled at in one video because I knocked a guy out and there was another guy. So I knocked a guy out, crouched down and walked towards him. Apparently, I didn't actually crouch even though I thought I crouched. I pressed the button and everyone was like, the reason why the guy spotted you is because you were walking at him. And I was like, "I, okay, sure. Like, I, they, it, It's very bizarre. Um, I just, yeah, I, I, I like the game. I'm enjoying it, but... It's far from being worth 60 bucks. It's not right. finished. It's not yeah. finished. From, not, the, it's not from the stealth aspect, it's definitely not finished. You can, it's like, they mostly come out at night, mostly. So the guards are supposed to go, you know, sort of against you, obviously, you know, if you're out at night past curfew as, you know, typical. But if you, if you conceal yourself on a bench, they'll just walk right by you. <laughs> it's fine. And that's like, there's mm. a lot of things in this game that it has the vibe of, oh, we're going for a dishonored feel with shit. Right. And levels and you can level up your characters, but I I don't like I don't know how you get levels. <laughs> I can't I'm not getting experience anywhere. I think you have to go to points in the story to unlock experience points. It's just like weird. Like a very yeah, it definitely to me seems like they took all these other things and crammed it in at the last minute to try to like make it the game they promised mm. instead of what we got it's like a game has and, to be everything it has to be open world it has to be survival it has to be stealth it has to be and again i think that comes back to the fact that there were 12 million different companies involved in the process of this game and everyone was like this is what it needs to be because this is what we say and once I, they pay the money like once xbox gives you that money you kind of have to do whatever the fuck xbox says that's like right. that's the rules I don't mean to like derail this conversation too much, but <laughs> what you just said made me think of. I mean, I've been replaying, or not, excuse me, not replaying. I, I started playing um, The Evil Within Two recently. Oh, it's been out yeah. for a while, and that's kind of my. It's a fun game, but that's kind of my problem with it too. It's like they tried to make it be everything. Like you're doing these crafting. There's like these weirdly open world areas where I'm just running from place to place, and I'm finding myself just like, what was wrong with the first one where it just like linearly led me through the cool parts? Sure. Now it's like I have to find the cool parts myself, and like I don't know, it's just kind of like a weird. I'm not. I'm. Are you guys over open world games? I mean, not over, <laughs> but like they're so overused, right? Yeah. Like super over it. I, I'm, well, I'm not over open world. I'm over the idea of open world where the... there's no reason for it to be an open. Yeah, over. World. Yeah, it has to be yeah, over world. Yeah. Like ev 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 open world. That's yeah. It seems like every game has to be open world. Even Breath of the Wild, I was like, this this could be better if it was more a little more linear. Like, I agree. You know? I agree with that. And I, I think I think the, it's the idea that it's about time sinks, right? It's about creating a time sink for players so they can explore and they create their own adventures and that kind of shit. But the biggest problem is then that a lot of it is not filled with stuff. And I know developers are like, ah, yes, because they explore and real world doesn't have a thing every five minutes. But then you look at a game like Witcher, which was literally like, we're going to put shit everywhere. Everywhere is going to have something. And it made the open world experience better because even the shit that wasn't important still had a story aspect. Like, oh, there's a note. And this note will lead to another fucking thing. It'll lead to another thing. And everything felt like you were doing a thing in that game. And mm -hmm. it made the open world fun. Um, yeah, I don't like the open world games that are like, sure, there's a lot of stuff to do, but you got to go find it. It's out in the middle of nowhere, and there's, like, a quest. But there's, like, miles of riding a horse in between. Like, I just... Yeah, I'm don't over Don't hate it. on I'm Roach. Over. Don't hate on Roach. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, you basically just sort of described Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, which I'm actually really excited for. See, like, if, if every open world game was, like, a Rockstar game, sign me up for all time, I'm, like, forever. I'm, I'm but like, worried about Red Dead 2. Like, you are? I'm, oh, no. I, I mean, like, I'm excited. I hope it's going to be amazing, but, like... I'm really concerned that the open world nature of it is going to be too open worldy, but that could just be a concern. I could be way off. But Rockstar's there, always done open world the best, though. I look. Right? I agree with you when it's a city. Yeah, and they do. You play? Did you play well. Red Dead One? I did, and I enjoyed it, but it was like that's an old game. Like, well, yeah. Let's be real. Like, like Witcher. I think 
really changed the game for a lot of companies. Sure. So to speak. Um, and and Witcher Witcher Three was a game that had lots of like expansive areas where there wasn't a whole lot going on, but it's the game still felt full. Well, yeah, and exactly. So the the, the potential of- for Red Dead Two to like pull from that in the way that other games companies are pulling from that is is there. I mean, it it might again. I'm not a person who latches on to very many open world games at all, um, <coughs> but if they if they do that and they are playing other games that are in that wheelhouse and learning from them, then I think it could, it could wind up having a lot going on. Sure. You know what, you know what I think part of it is, at least for me, this is just a thought that popped up in my head. So maybe I'm off with this. I think open world games where it's really fun to get around the world, like GTA, I'm going to drive this car, I'm going to drift around, or maybe I can get in this motorcycle or something like that. That's, that makes it me forget that it's like I'm just moving from point A to point B, whereas something like The Evil Within 2, I'm literally just walking there. And like, sure. I'm just like, can I just be there now? Like, I don't know. Breath of the Wild kind of has some of that too, where it's like, it's there's a lot of cool stuff in the world, but realistically, you're just kind of running around. And sometimes you can glide, that's fun. Sometimes you can climb and like find new things, but a lot of times you're just sort of running to places. And I'm like, it's a beautiful world. I love looking at all the different things and exploring, but I totally miss like just, oh man, I'm going to the shadow temple now and like going in and like, or now I'm going to go over here. Like, I don't know. I just kind of, it just kind of, this. it just doesn't feel, I don't know. I just don't think there's anything wrong with having a linear package where you just carry you through a story. Like I, I, I miss that. What, yeah. That's what I think Witcher's, the, 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 the trick there that they pulled is that even though it was open world, Every because they made like let's say you went to a room like a, like a dungeon you found a like skeleton army and then you found a note and the note was like oh my god the skeleton army the reason they exist is because this guy who lives over in this area so everything like felt connected because it's like oh my god if I go to that other area there's a thing there and everything was sort of a story and everything fit together in like making the package of that world and I think if they can fool you with that trickery of like it's open world. But like a note says that it's important, so you feel like it's important, then you're good. I I don't know that many games can do that though, right? Like many games can connect every piece to every other fucking thing uh, mm-hmm. to make it feel that way because you know the the it takes Witcher a lot guys, of development time for one thing. Yeah, the Witcher guys, that's their thing. Is they don't like fucking cyberpunk has been in development for <laughs> how long like mm-hmm. they don't they don't live on the same timeline as everyone else because they <laughs> yeah. have like their own shit and so they can take the time to do that stuff i feel like most companies and this is this is why even though i enjoyed assassin's creed whatever the last one was called not origins assassin's what egypt, <laughs> uh assassin's even though I enjoyed that, egypt. yeah and even though i enjoyed that one because it also felt very witchery I'm now concerned the next one, even though I'm like hyped for Greece, is going to be like, oh, well, they're pumping shit out now. So here we go again. Let's see what happens. So, right. I, you know, I have some concern, but I'm still going to play it because we'll see what the fuck. Yeah. Cycling back to uh, Red Dead Redemption, too, though, I, I do feel like it is a slower paced GTA, I guess, in, in, in ways. You know, Red Dead is like GTA for older people in a weird way. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's if if GTA was directed by Michael Bay, then Red Dead Redemption would be directed by Clint Eastwood, sort sure. of. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it right. is slower paced, maybe for a little bit of an older demographic. Um I am interested to see what they do with this one though, because you know, you're writing with a gang now, you know, you have, you know, and the morality coming into it is different as well. So I feel like I'm glad they addressed that. Be- that. Same. And I feel like that is going to be kind of like the glue, that, you know, going back to what you guys were talking about, about, you know, feeling like there's some at least overarching connector, you know, it's not open world just because, you know, there, there's a reason there is a point to it, having that as a, as a signifier, a genre edition, mm-hmm. whatnot. But um, I am I'm excited to see what they do with that. I just I'm, I, I'm I'm always very wary now of games that I get too hyped up for. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean it's Rockstar. I feel I feel like I can I can count on it being at least as good as the other well, other one. Hopefully, I, but w- w- I'm I'm hoping with Red Dead too because I feel like one of the biggest criticisms people gave of the first Red Dead. I forget what the terminology people used for it was, but it's this idea where 
and you brought up morality, which is why it made me think of this. Mm. You're doing your character supposed to be this good guy, but he's doing all these terrible things and like killing all these people, like literally just mountains of people he's killing, and yeah. it never really addresses that morality issue. I, I was hoping when I saw that trailer and they mentioned and that yeah, stuff, that, I'm the hoping line, that they really took that yeah. criticism to heart. Oh, and they're gonna make it part of the story. He oh, seems I, uh, entirely a blank canvas. That's can Morgan I, seems can that I ask way. A question? Mm. Going back to an old topic. This is for chat or for you guys. Going back to We Happy Few, speaking of morality, <laughs> it gives you the chance to knock people out, but also you can just take a, like, one of the main events at the very beginning is you have a choice between either fighting with a club that's padded or a spear that can kill a person. Throughout mm -hmm. that game, chat, I need help. <laughs> is there any help point in which it hurts me where I can kill people? Like, I don't. Like at some points, oh. I'm just like, if I could just beat a person to death, that'd be great because uh -huh. it does more damage. And if I hit them with a padded thing, it takes forever. But I see no morality in the game. It's like stopping me from doing <laughs> that. I'm just curious if I if no I should. No way that the game like delineates based on what you choose or not how that you I've choose. seen. Not that's at all. Yeah, and that's part of the problem because it, it makes it difficult. Because sh realistically, shooting everybody on your horse and like you know taking out twenty people is super fun. So, like, that's ideally what you'd want to do. So, if there's no reason to do the moral issue, if you don't get re or the more moral choice, if you don't get rewarded for it in any kind of way, then it's like, yeah, why would I do it? I guess. It's, it's, you can tell the like, characters are written sort of that way. You have to play, it's three different characters and you play them kind of in order. And you can tell that each character is sort of meant to experience things in a different way, whether one's a bit more right. stealthy. Are you talking about GTA? Uh, oh, sorry. Five We're now? talking about We Happy oh, Few. No. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> But I, I'm just saying, as far as like morality is concerned, you can you can just tell that those characters are kind of written a very specific way. But even right. the um, I guess the roles that they're sort of stuck into is still wrong and broken. And I'm I'm probably just gonna have to make a video on all the things wrong with We Happy Few. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to this yeah. realization because I rage so hard playing Sally. It's like no non-lethal takedowns. You, but like yeah, I find no bobby very, pins for stealth. What? Yeah, the morality is very bizarre because everyone in town is trying to kill my ass. Right. And they've got shovels and spears. And I'm like, I'm just knocking people out trying to like live here. And I feel like, okay, if I'm trying to live, then fuck them. Maybe I should kill these people. Everybody's because on drugs anyway, right? Yeah. They're not going to feel and it. So, <laughs> and so meanwhile, I think going back to GTA 5, for example, the characters you played... It was very obvious from Jump Street, the morality of the characters you played. Yeah, I was going to mention this, too. Them the way you wanted to play them, and every character was like, oh, this dude is a fucking bad person, or this person is an asshole. So, like, you got into the character, and you did the things. It made the world, you know, like, it made, go back to GTA 4. Was GTA 4 Nico and all that shit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like, go back to that. Where, like, it tried to make you, like, you're the tough bruiser guy, but, like, you have a heart of gold. GTA yeah. 5 Fuck it. There's a reason why you drive through stoplights, and there's a reason why you run over pedestrians. There's a reason why you do all the shit you do in GTA, because you're bad people. And it made right. sense. And I was like, uh, all right. Yeah, I, I, I was going to bring that up, too. Actually, I feel like GTA Five handled it super well in an interesting way, where they made three, you placed the three different characters, and they kind of have a hierarchy of evil to, like, yeah. pretty evil to not as evil. They're all bad. Right. But, they're all but, bad. Like, but, but doing that allowed me to play in, in different ways. So it's like, Man, you know, I kind of just want to drive around and, and chill. So I'd be the one, I forget his name. I'd be the one guy that drive. And then, you know, I could, I would still do some bad stuff, but mostly I try to obey the traffic laws. And then I would, then it's like, man, okay, I'm bored of that. I'm going to switch to Trevor. I think his name is. And I'm just going to oh, go crazy. Gosh. Cause yeah. like, that's what he would do. Right. Mm -hmm. So you kind of become the character. That was the whole thing though. It's like, it was very blatant. As soon as the word go, you know, you, you knew immediately, like even starting as Franklin, you knew like, ah, oh, you know, he's a badass. In his, in his own yeah. mind. He is the ego, you know? And so you you feel that initially. Uh, first few cutscenes, you're just like, yes, all this. It's like, oh, yeah, let's be Michael and do hot yoga. Mm. And, and then Trevor's just <laughs> like, what? What's, what's yeah. happening? It kind of like, you. It, it kind of gives you the, it kind of allows you to be like, okay, you want to be really bad sometimes. You can yep. do it while you're this guy. Yeah. He doesn't care. Like, you feel it allowed. Like, you feel permission in, in, yeah, yeah, in a like, world. Yeah. Otherwise, you would make those decisions to be like, oh, maybe I want to be good guy, Trevor. No, you don't. No one wants to be yeah. good guy, Trevor. Because right. if, you're, if you're just Nico, it kind of becomes, well, I'm sort of Nico, too, because he's the only character. But if yeah. there's three different characters, it's like, okay, no, I'm none of these guys. These are just individual characters. So what would this guy do in this situation? Which right. kind of handles it in a way, like, I mean, realistically, 
just by picking the characters and you can play as multiple people, that kind of right. solves that problem. W were they doing that in Red Dead 2? Like, they I only watched the one trailer. I was trying to, like, not watch too like much of it. Blank slate, man. Okay, yeah. so you're just playing Morgan as one is, one person. Right. Yeah. Morgan oh, yeah. is is just he seemed nothing, you know. That's it okay. is it is you know, you're from everything I've seen anyway, it seems very much like a blank slate and that you think, get to decide how moral. Jenna, I think you character. nailed it with the idea of give permission. I think when you play a game, at least for me, and I, I know most people that I know as well, when you play a game you always like I'm the good guy. I'm trying to be the good guy here. Mm -hmm. I want to do the good choices. Like going back to a choices. game that I, you know, loved to death, the first like Dishonored. Oh, you gosh, could be a badass and be a terrible person and like kill everyone. But if you did, you were punished for it. Like the, the oh, world yeah. around you was falling apart. And sure, you could do things faster, but like if you snuck and you took your time, you found creative ways to get people, it, you benefited from it. And I think that's the idea of most games where it's like, if you're a good guy, you do things the good way and you take your time, in the end, you benefit from it. Right. And most do that because they want to feel good about the choices they're making. I like the idea when a game gives you the permission to mm. be a piece of shit. Oh, where yeah. it's like, yeah. you know what? Yeah. I am going to be a terrible person because this guy's already terrible. It's not me. I'm not the bad person. Right. This dude's a bad person. After and watching Trevor that. through the he torture scene, you you have no qualms about making him do the dirtiest, filthiest, whatever stuff because he, look what he just did. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the character. And I think, um, uh, oh my God, my brain just died. The hacker game. Uh, D raw dog, oh, dog. Uh, watch dogs watch dogs yeah. raw dog raw dog, raw dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that game Woo, I think the that game watch dog rated m watch dog game tried to do that where they tried to make like a character you'd want to go hack with and stuff but he just turned out to be an ass that no one liked and i think like if you're gonna go full-on bad guy be the villain when i played star wars the old republic and they're like Yes, you're a Sith Inquisitor, and your options are like bad or worse, and you're like, a good. That was fun. It was a fun moment mm. to be a villain. And you people like the anti-hero characters. Yeah, giving someone the permission to be a piece, like not even anti-hero, just a piece of shit. Like right. you, you expect in the end, like this guy's gonna get what he deserves. By the end of this, something terrible is gonna happen to this guy, and I wanna be on the adventure, and I wanna be the person responsible for that happening to that guy. Mm -hmm. And like you want to see like I did terrible things and this guy got what he deserved and like that's fucking amazing. Or sometimes you're the bad guy and nothing happens and it's like holy shit I can't believe I got away. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, but the idea of permission where the game says up front it's okay to be a villain because we're not going to punish you for that. In fact that's part of the story. Yeah. Like you are that. the villain. Don't do so be the villain. You're encouraged yeah. to be a piece of crap. Mm -hmm. And you feel yeah. good about that. You feel good about that choice that you made. Yeah, I always kind of had those issues too, like dating back to KOTOR 1, where I'm like, I just have to be the good guy. But because but being the bad guy is so fun sometimes too. But like, I don't know, you start making these bad choices and and what's her face with her Wookiee and you're like making him yeah. kill her or something. I can't remember at the end and I'm just like, I can't handle this. Yeah, yeah. But, that, that's what <laughs> but if it gives you the permission, then it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if they give it like all, when they when a game gives you all these choices and like, all the choices are like, sure, you can be a bad guy, or you can be like in between, or you can be a good guy. Most of the time, the bad guy options in the end punish you for being the bad guy, oh, yeah. no matter what, or give you the shitty ending. And you're like, I yeah, want I want the good wait. ending. Yeah, I want the good ending, and I want to feel good once I'm done with the game. And I, you know, I don't want to feel like a piece of shit. But every don't play Trevor. <laughs> jumps like you're the villain and you're not a good person, and the things you do in this world aren't going to be good. And that's what sort of is fun about uh, Saints Row. Oh, you could be yes. You were a piece of shit. Like, it was great. That was what, and, and, and then they were like, now you're a superhero piece of shit. And it was like, oh, my. <laughs> but right. I'm a superhero piece of shit with a dildo bat. So. Yes. And it was. <laughs> How can you so take that seriously? You don't feel, you feel like an, av you really do feel like the avatar. You don't really connect as, you know, oh, let's spend a million hours in character creation for someone who looks just like me. And let's make all of these moral decisions that make me feel horrible at the end because it's me, but on a screen. But instead right. in Saints Row, it's like everything is so redonkulous that there's no way that you could attach that to your own personality because it's just so out there. You can't just walk out downtown wherever. Well, I don't know. It depends on what town you live in, I guess. But if you're in suburbia, as I am, you can't just walk into like a downtown little suburban area with a dildo bat and be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna bash cars and, and super life. jump yeah. a million feet in the air and hover over here like I'm Superman slash Spider-Man in a weird sort they of way. They get shut down real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But it's it's because it's so at the other end, you don't attach those feelings. You don't feel sure. guilty for being mm-hmm. that way, I guess. Yeah, it, it's the yeah, unless well, you live an experience that there's no way you could ever ex- live or would even want to. But there's, you know, I mean, that's part of just what makes video games fun, I guess. So when they allow you to do that, it makes it easier to enjoy it. Even for people like me, I think that are more keen on like, uh, yeah, I got to make the good choices. It's like, nah, just do it. Yeah. I'd live in a Saints Row world. You can be fat in Saints Row. You it can allows be anything you. Anything in Saints it, Row. Did you really want to live in Saints Row, though? Saints Row. Oh, my God. Oh, I was an old man in a it. bathrobe and boxer shorts. <laughs> that was my character. And That's I went my around dream, and right? People. It was great. <laughs> That's, I was like, that is my avatar. That is but would you want to be. be one of the people in the world? I don't think so. If, no. no well, I mean, because you're gonna get the dildo bat against the head. Yeah, no, those were dildo bat fodder. Those weren't no. actual yeah. people. See, so that's that's, that's what I thought you meant. I, I would not want to live there. Crazy. I would not yeah. want to live in that world. Because chances are, I'm not the hero. I'm just some random <laughs> guy working at McDonald's or something. <clears throat> some guy just I, breaks in with all this crazy stuff. S- that can't be an, an, an original idea. There has to be a video on the internet of like a day in the life of someone in Saints Row. And it's just them walking like do 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 do. The guy hits him with a dildo. But there's a guy that has to exist. That that's not a that can't be new. Oh, I, guess. So- I did do it. I did do a video once. I don't remember if it was any good, but I did a video <laughs> on the top ten worst places to live in video games or something like that. I think number one was this game I have called Tornado Jockey, where the whole point is to just destroy all the cities and like you're just destroying entire cities with tornadoes, and the tornadoes can throw like nukes at you and stuff. And I'm like. This is by far the worst. I would not want to live here. You're just going to get blown up by a giant tornado. <clears throat> but yeah, that's always been a funny topic to me. It's like, imagine just being a uh, character in GTA, but also the opposite. Like, what world would you want to live in? I would want to live in, like, Animal Crossing or something. It's like, wander around and collect stuff. Um, Happy music all the time. Maybe Leisure Suit Larry? Huh? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to think of a world where, like, just... It's debauchery is the only point. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> Laser suit Larry. What, what, what world would you guys want to live in in a game? I, I'm going to stick with either Harvest Moon or Animal Crossing. I mean, those are so be a farmer. I, that would be cool. Harvest, Everybody's yeah. like souped up dragon people. But you're like yeah. living in this world. I think I had Monster Hunter on my list of places, places you wouldn't want to live. Because there's these giant monsters just everywhere. Like, it sounds great. Like, oh, I'll go stop but them. But it's only... But like, no... Only- you're a, you only fight them if you're like a if you're like a souped up person. No, but the monsters come and like attack like the towns monster. and stuff. Get to hang out with cute kitties and like have a pet pig and. I guess I'm assuming like it would be realistic. Like in the game, it's like okay, we can kill these monsters. But if it, you were really there, no, they would crush you. They would kill everyone, and you'd be dead. That's true. Oh, so maybe you know I'm what? thinking too pessimistically about it. I'm actually Chat going through right. your video Pokemon right now. Pokemon might be it's, the best world to live in. Oh, no. In reality. Oh, Pokemon's a good world. Pokemon yeah. might be the best one. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a good one. Not if you're even, a Pokemon, though. Not the bad guys. Not if well, you're, if you're a Pokemon, that's a terrible world to live in because people are catching you and making you fight. Yeah, but according to, to Pikachu, who is a human apologist, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Pikachu is just Pikachu's propaganda. Pikachu is a human apologist. Yeah. <laughs> Pikachu's propaganda. <laughs> I, I totally disagree with you, Austin, by the way, on the Bioshock thing. I would want to live in Bioshock. Yeah. That made your list, and I, I was really sad yep. about that. It's like, that's that's my dream. That's my, that's my dream. That's my thing right there. I'd want to live most, there. Totally. I mostly did the list in jest, but actually that was like part of the fun was reading the responses like dodger like i would love to live in yes. in uh in uh freaking monster hunter i liked reading the resp- some of them were angry at me and i'm like i was just joking around like i was nothing about this was serious but it was interesting reading the responses like no i would love to live in this world because it w- i want to be a hero or whatever the like answer yeah. is yeah yeah for sure because like, i was when thinking I, of it if i imagine myself in monster hunter right it's like a really like strong, powerful, brave person, of, like version of myself, right? Oh, not just yeah. you in Monster Hunter. I only imagine me in a game. Like, yeah. I, I, like if I was in Monster Hunter, I'd be like, guess I'm gonna go chill with the cats. Oh, the cats are braver than me. Cool. I guess I'll. <laughs> but that's what I mean, right? Like, if you were in that world, would you have risen to the occasion? Like you, as you? Would no. You just like. I'd like to I would think have so. I'd like to like, think so, but there? it's like I volunteer yeah, as I tribute. Like to think so too. That's what I mean. This is like a this is like a power fantasy for me. Being oh, that. oh, you mean like if I was born in that world? Yeah. 
Oh, if yeah. I was born in that world, I'd be one of those giant fucking monsters you're trying to kill. Let's be real. <laughs> I'd be that guy who's like, and you have to climb on my back and like hack off minerals and shit. I'd be that. If I was born in that world, chances are I'd be a monster. Let's be real. <laughs> the monster to human ratio seems way out of whack, so I'd probably be a monster. I'd be the guy in the in the like city just sitting there like, why is not, why is everybody not petrified that the giant water monster is just gonna come swallow our giant a small little they village in one fell swoop in monster hunter anymore they got rid of the water levels well i was at the time i think uh monster hunter 3 ultimate had just come out so that's what i was thinking monster they're hunter. living right on the water there's the giant sure. water monster and they're just living there like it's scary sure. right maybe i'm just not brave enough i don't know i mean like one hunter can't can be the hero that monster so it's probably not that bad and in, re in reality if one hunter can do it it's not that bad <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah. How hard could it be? I mean, I I, I I lose in the game, even in the game version, though. So I'd probably really lose in real life. <laughs> so imagine you're trying to like dodge these like giant monsters. I just get like flattened in like two seconds. And they're like, "Oh, there's Austin. He's gone." Like, I mean, he didn't last oh, very long. Oh, there's Austin. He's. Gone. I'll just be. You know, I'll be the horn guy. I'll just. Like just I dance in the love, background. <laughs> I always love in this like hypothetical sort of conversation. There's always somebody who's like, "I want to live in Harvest Moon," and it's like, "You could live Harvest Moon in like now, real life. That's you can go true, outside yeah. and farm go. right now." Yeah, like, yeah. Not, but there's no happy music. I I, I talked to my wife about this because we both love Harvest Moon. It's actually kind of how we met. Harvest Moon, uh, is basically. Long story short, Aww. and we like we're t every now and then we'll talk about like. All right, when we're older, if we've got nothing else going on, we can just like start this small farm and we'll make this playlist, put speakers everywhere, and we'll make this playlist of all the like spring Harvest Moon mu music plays. And so we go outside, turn on the music, and then so we're like living this Harvest Moon world. Okay, it's winter. Got to switch it to the winter music. Yeah, that's my just Live in Harvest Moon. I can't, wait, I can't wait. I can't wait till the police again. find you guys crazy in like your your cottage <laughs> in the wilderness. We're, we're eating like the mushrooms that you find in, in like a wonderful <laughs> life. <laughs> like to go you eat these mushrooms to go like meet the the little gnome guys or whatever they're called the ha harvest sprites we're just finding wild mushrooms living the life man oh yeah it'll be great we'll be like 70. <laughs> i love it i love this the farm place. might not be looking great i don't know if we're really going to be it like able to like we might grow some <laughs> potatoes go, like green i'll go water and... the plants honey <laughs> We'll hire people to do it, maybe. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, I think I think that your uh, point in your you know game worlds that you probably wouldn't want to live in though is pretty accurate with your number three because uh, I what mean what was I, it again? I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the stream of it so okay. people can see it, but uh, darkest dungeon. <laughs> oh yeah, jeez. I'm I'm thinking oh, maybe no, I mean maybe not. That should have been one. <laughs> I haven't gotten to number one yet, but it's like as soon as I saw three, I'm like, you know what? As much as I love the art style, and I'd probably be like looking in the mirror all the time, like what mirror? But it's like, be like, oh, these harsh lines are so cool. Oh, wait, someone wants me to go with them? I'm gonna huh. die. Well, don't <laughs> worry. When you come back, you can make yourself feel better by just whipping yourself in the church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a great a life. A lot of flagellants in yeah. the Darkest Dungeon, <laughs> oddly enough. Yeah, you, you, you'll, be, you'll be fine. You, I mean, realistically, it doesn't matter what game we're like. You guys were right. You guys were right. Maybe I was being too pessimistic on that whole thing. You'll just adjust to the world. Like it'll just be where you live. Like you're you're in Darkest Dungeon. This is just the way it is. Like oh, I'm content. How it is. You're in Dark Souls. This you yeah. just yeah. <laughs> Maybe you just need a little bit of optimism. Yeah, number one should always be Sim City. At least a Sim game of some description, because there's just way too much that can literally happen. All it it wasn't Sim City. It I I, yeah, I mentioned I, I know. Sim City. I was like. You could say this you or could. this, but I had yeah. a, I had that tornado game. Yeah, so I just I like know. put that aside. I was it like, is the whole point everywhere. is to destroy the city. Right. right. So right. like that's even worse than SimCity, I guess. It's like SimCity with all of the, uh, I guess, Mother Nature sort of settings set to max. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Sorry, I don't know how we ended up just discussing no, one of my like two and a half year old videos that probably sucks anyways. <laughs> no, because the topic was what kind of, you know, game worlds would you actually want to live in and which ones you don't definitely come into play for sure. It makes you think. It's like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. really cool to live there. Oh, wait, but then all of this other chaos actually does happen. It's like, wow, I would actually like to live in a Pokemon world, but if I had to be the Pokemon literally being caught and trained and forced against my will to compete against other animals... I don't think I would enjoy that very much. Yeah, it's better as a fantasy. Mm. Yeah, it's better as a yeah, fantasy because like I feel like conversation. 
Like, would if you I was the aliens, or would you like try to live among them and just be cool with being their pet? <laughs> yeah, you know, who I, knows? I I can't help but feel like if I was in Pokemon. I would just feel so obligated to be like an activist to save the Pokemon. Like, guys, right. this is not yeah. right. Let what we're doing is not right. But I mean, since it's a video game, it doesn't matter. But like, the second it becomes real, it introduces all these problems. Sort of like back, like wrapping it all back up to like mm. what we were initially talking about. It's like, it's fun to just be able to do anything and it not matter. That's what's what makes that's what makes stuff like you know GTA it's fun in the first place. I guess kind of stress relieving as well. <laughs> So what else have you guys been playing lately, Jesse? I Just mean, look, Battle for Azeroth wow. and wow. We Happy That's Few. Literally, it. yeah, yeah. I thought that might have been the case. What about yeah. you, Brooke? Anything new? Um, I've just been going really ham on Pixelmon, <clears throat> which has been like a a really strange crossover for me because, um, basically, like a bunch of the boys uh put together a server with the plan of everybody chooses a type and everybody like creates their own gym and becomes a gym leader. Um, and then they'll open up the server to everybody else to, like, come in and have to, like, fight at their gyms. Oh. Um, and so they asked me if I wanted to join. And I was like, sure. But I know basically next to nothing about Minecraft. And I only know about Gen 1 Pokemon, right? So uh, I was like, well, sure, you know, I'll be useless. But, yeah, why not? And it's wound up now that um, I've created a gym that that doesn't exist uh i'm i'm making a cat cafe that is also like the gym and i'll i'm just gonna wander around the world with only cat pokemon and <laughs> just like just like it's exist like how it way. is yeah it's um it's been a journey it's honestly <laughs> been really fun though which is so funny people keep coming into my chat and being like minecraft are we playing Minecraft right now? This is so weird. And I agree, it is very weird. But I'm I'm actually having a blast. It's been really fun. Um, everything else just like Legos, totally... though. You can yeah. do anything with it. Like... You could say that, but the Minecraft people will be like, like <laughs> I mean, like at Minecraft the core the level. Minecraft business. Right. No, you're right. You can make games within a game, which is what oh. makes Minecraft still enjoyable to play sometimes. You can make a right. 3D printer in Minecraft if you so desire, and it'll function. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about how Minecraft works now that, you know, it's been around forever. You bunch the trees um, to get the wood. You get the... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I I was uh, using my pick to get sand for a long time. That is not ah, what you're supposed to do. Not exactly There's, optimal. Yeah, but you can do it. <laughs> lots of things like that. Where people were like, do we tell her? <laughs> do, do, do we tell her what's wrong with this? Maybe uh, we just let her do it. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's not the comments. That's not the way the comments go. Maybe, maybe your comments. I don't know. You're not supposed to use the pickaxe. Niceness onto my community. <laughs> <laughs> but that's honestly been really, really fun. Um, and then everything else is just kind of like games that. I was already playing, but either wrapped up or played more of. Um, did the the third part of the council? Oh, um, excellent! I haven't gotten there yet, but I, I, I enjoy the council. <laughs> yeah, there's there's going to be five chapters total, so mm. we're like a little over halfway now, and the game just keeps like either doing this or doing this, depending on what type <laughs> of a player you are. Right. Um, it's it's been fun. It's a wild ride. That game is so weird. Um. And, uh, oh, I finished Spiral Scouts, that, like, super, it's it's that game that's by the Honey Pop devs, that's like a puzzle game. Oh, man, game. yeah. Yeah, I played that whole thing. Um, and that game, like, that game had lots of puzzles that were really difficult, and then lots of puzzles that were just sort of like, okay, yeah. Um, it had, it had a, a decent amount in it where I was going, I don't know if I'm ever going to figure this out. And then once you figure it out, you feel so smart. right? Yeah. Uh, and I love that. That's that feeling is, is what I live for in a puzzle game. Um, being able to actually figure it out when you get so frustrated that you have to look it up. That's when the fun stops for me. But this game had just the right amount of like, fuck, I can't, I'm never going to figure this out. <gasps> Wait a minute. <laughs> right. <laughs> Great. But, um, I like the relief. Beware. It's like it's like a wave of relief. It's like, oh, yeah. I don't have to look anything up. I hate when you have to look things up. Yeah. It's like, I feel uh, like I cheated. 
but definitely beware this is a mature content game in terms of like the characters and the story and all I mean, that. it uses it's, fart warming in its pitch. Mm, it does. Yeah. Instead of heart warming, fart warming. So, some of the jokes are like, hmm. Other jokes are like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but lots of good puzzles. So I enjoyed it. Um, beyond that, I can't, I can't remember a whole lot. Do you play a lot of puzzle games? I really like puzzle games, but they have to be... They have to be like the right type of puzzle game for me. And I don't know how to describe what type of puzzle game it is that I enjoy, but I like there to be some sort of story involved. Um, I really enjoy like point and click puzzle crossover sort of stuff. Do you, what, what would you say is like some, one of your favorite puzzle games? Oh God. I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't think I'll be I'm, able to think of one. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I, I was just kind of like, cause I always like puzzle games, but I'm kind of the same way where Certain puzzle games just don't do it for me, and I can't necessarily pinpoint what it is about them. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I, I, I like to give puzzle games a chance every now and then. I, I really wanted to like The Witness. Oh, um, yeah, I played that. I, really I don't know if I did. Too. I'll have to go back and give it another shot. But. The Witness was too, too little going on and too often frustrating. Yeah, it's such an intriguing... It. Yeah, it's such an intriguing world. And I really just want to see more of what's in the world, kind of like a mist type of game, which I would be yeah. more into. It felt, but it didn't really feel like mist. It was like, you're just doing these puzzles. Like, it, I mean, that's just all it really is. So you get, but you do get, I mean, I guess, I guess going in, I was expecting it to be something else and it wasn't that. Right. So I, I, I keep thinking I'm going to go back to the witness and give it another shot. Maybe I'll do it on stream and everybody can help me with the puzzles when I get mixed up. <laughs> Maybe that's Dude, what streaming, I should do. Streaming those games is usually uh, the way to do it for me because I tell my chat like, "Don't tell me what the answer <laughs> is," unless um, you ask. And if I if I ask for help, I want like a hint. hint. Right? Okay, I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like, the whole thing. Here's the answer. Yeah. So getting just like little hints when you have people that are watching that are really good at like, how do I, how do I just like guide the streamer in the right direction like when you when you have people who are able to do that it's it's really helpful yeah mm -hmm. it's like playing the room it's, except you click that like the little hint thing and it gives you just like a tiny bit of an yeah, inkling just, as to what you're supposed to do sort of mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i hate i hate when i'm playing a puzzle game and there's a hint thing I feel like mm -hmm. Jesse and I have played so many games where this has happened. <laughs> There's a hint thing and you click it and too it much. tells you something you already fucking know. Oh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> I, hate like, that. I hate that. I know <laughs> that. What's the next part though? <laughs> um, I already figured out the thing you're telling me. I need, I need the next. Oh, God. <laughs> what, one, least... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. No, don't worry about it. I was just going to say, um, I just recently finished a series of puzzle games on my iPad uh -huh. uh, <laughs> that, I mean, I, I love the series in itself. I, I love each installment, but it is pretty hard and pretty frustrating. And that would be the, um, like the Rusty Lake and the Rusty collection. God, I love the Rusty Lake games so I much. I love them because they're so macabre and, but yet fun and weird and gross and disturbing and mm -hmm. difficult, but in a good way. I, I definitely feel a sense of achievement when I have like, past an entire stage without having to second guess or walk away from it for a couple hours and come back and be like, oh yeah, maybe that was the answer. Right. But some parts are just downright frustrating and I'm just like, why? I really love- It's punishing. Cause, yeah, cause Jesse and I wind up playing all of those games. Oh, And nice. there've been a couple of times now where I've been able to play the game first and then go and watch Jesse play the game. And it's always- Oh, that's fun. <laughs> it's fascinating because like, we always get stuck at completely different parts. Like oh, there'll be a part okay. that I was stuck on forever and he'll be like, oh, click, click, click. And I'm like, God damn it. How did he figure that out? <laughs> but then there'll be another part that was easy for me that he's like, he just can't like. I still to this day, if it, that whatever that riddle is that's existed for, I'm going to say centuries where you have to like, <laughs> Put water from one jug into two jugs to put it into one. I jug hate and that. I hate puzzles. that so much. I can't figure that Screw out. Those puzzles. I in hate games, them. They give me the solution. I couldn't figure it out in the movie Die Hard with a Vengeance. I can't figure <laughs> it out to this day. And everyone's like, "Oh, that's an obvious answer." I'm like, "I still don't get it." And I solved that puzzle like 15 times. I still don't know. I still couldn't tell you. 
it's only obvious if you can imagine things two or three steps ahead. And the problem is I don't have that kind of foresight intentionally. Yeah, I, I am a I am very paranoid and very anxious. So I'm always thinking about like, oh, the potential outcomes of every single action. But in those games, I'm I'm trying to escape the everyday whatnot. And so when I get anxiety because I can't see two or three steps ahead of how to how to math, it yeah. pisses me off. It's yeah. like I went to college. How did <laughs> how how does this happen? I was a waitress. Yeah. I used to make change for tips. How I mean how 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 can I, how can I not math? That was the I witness for me. It's like. <laughs> That was the witness. It's like, no, I knew it. I knew it. I'm really dumb. I feel like I just really I just thought I thought maybe I wasn't, but I am. That's like sometimes like how puzzle games get. I feel like it can be frustrating. I feel like that's actually what I should do the next time I encounter one of those liquid games is I'm going to take a certain amount of alcohol to a bar. I'm going to sit down with the bartender and I'm going to be like, hey, guy. Here's this much alcohol. You need to make this many drinks. This one's a double shot. This one's a single. And then this one is like half the remaining bottle. Now, complete. (laughs) I want to see. I want to see if that works. Trust me. There's a big tip coming after this. The like start this puzzle over button in real life. (laughs) Yeah. That would be a pain in the ass when you fucked it up. Puzzle games. Good times. Mm. I hate them. They're they're frustrating. They can be frustrating. I want to like them. I, I like it when there's puzzles in games and like scattered around. I, I love like Resident Evil kind of puzzles because you're just like going around and shooting zombies and stuff. And then all of a sudden, it's oh, it's a puzzle. And it's like not really that hard. And I solve it instantly. I'm like, got it. I knew it. I love puzzle games. <laughs> then just go shoot some more zombies in the head. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to think what else been playing recently. It's like it's installed. What's on here? I guess um, I could go if you. Oh wanna... no! Please, Bring... please, by, by all means. Yeah, I, I played a little bit of a. Well, there wasn't too many games coming out recently that interested me. One was WarioWare Gold. I played that. That was pretty fun. Um, a lot of good hype for that game. I haven't played yeah, it, but I've been I, seeing the reviews trickle out. Yeah, I haven't played. I only played through the story so far. Um, me and Jeff played through it. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to doing some of the multiplayer because I feel like that's really where the game is. But um, that was pretty fun. I don't have a whole lot to say about that one specifically. But I um, also there was this game. Okay, there's this game called Go Vacation. I, I, you guys heard of that? You've been talking about this. This is on Switch. Bit obscure, yeah, but yeah, it's on Switch. Right. I I don't know why, but I've always loved Wii Sports, specifically Wii Sports Resort. I loved mm. this idea of just being on this cutesy vacation island where everybody's just like super happy playing games and stuff like that. And I lo- also love arcade sports mini game games for some reason. So I'm obsessed with that game. So I'm always looking for like a new one. And Nintendo right. hasn't made one. But Go Vacation for the Wii was kind of like that. Um, they ported it to the Switch. I tried Go Vacation for the Wii and, for some, and I didn't give it really much of a chance. But for some reason I was super like, no, 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 it's going to be great. It's coming out on the <laughs> Switch. I'm going to love it. My wife and her friend is another YouTuber. Some people in the chat may know named Brutal Moose, and they were like, "Oh, I don't know." We were watching the trailer together. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't seem sold. I was like, "Trust me, it's gonna be great." Uh, it turned out to be the exact opposite, where they are both like, "This game's awesome," and I'm, it just not doing it for me. I, I, I think I, I think I settled down to. All right, I narrowed it down to the game just has no personality at all. I mean, like it's, all... it's full of mini games, right? So, I mean, yeah, is that kind of the focus where it should be? A little bit more about just that. Yeah, and... you kind of drive around to the mini games, and there's a bunch of them. But first of all, first and foremost, most of them are not nearly as good as Wii Sports Resort. Like they're just not mm. as good. So that's the big problem. If they were, then I could look past this other stuff probably. But a less quantifiable measurement is, I think, also there's just no personality. Like I like these pointless games where nothing is really means anything. Like Animal Crossing <laughs> and Harvest Moon. I was talking about those. I love those kinds of games. But they, they, sort of, yeah. Yeah. They soak you in with like personality and characters and stuff. Like there's no Isabel and go vacation to greet Mm. you when you you come to the, to the world. There's just some lady that like talks and then you meet all these other characters, but I don't even remember if they have names. If they have names, it's (laughs) not, it doesn't matter. They don't have personalities. There's nothing in the game 
there's it just needs characters it needs a little bit more love and like personality it's just an empty world I almost feel like i'm going crazy when i'm there because like i'm like okay yeah we're in this happy vacation world and everyone i talk to is just like yeah vacation i love vacation it's great play this game and i'm like who are you like what are you what is your what what do you do for your life like you just stand here like i don't know it just feels so soulless I, and I'm, i just want to connect to something a little bit more substantial i think and it doesn't have it I am I'm looking through some of the the activities that you can do in this game There's because a lot I of hadn't them. I hadn't heard of it. I mean I see that the graphics look pretty dated so you can obviously tell yeah, it's it was a little poor yeah but um things like water gun battles but you can't use the other joystick so you're only using the left and that's like yeah. for the entire game like that would be really frustrating it almost be like you i feel like you use the motions surprisingly little i feel like it'd be mm. better if you did because like that's why i like what we sports store you know it feels like you're really shooting a bow like you pull it back or you can you know pull right. it back and you aim with like you know you actually aim it and there's not a whole lot of that in 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 this game and when it is it doesn't feel like it's done that well right it just it it, it, it when it's it it, it got ported to the Switch. I don't know why that made me think it would somehow be better. No, no, no. It, I, mean, that's I convinced a good, myself it, that it would. It, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, statement to make because, you know, I am constantly looking at things that are coming out on Switch, and I'm like, yeah, but why is it on the Switch? It, just mm. the way that, you know, my husband used to look at things, like, they're on PC. Well, why is it being on... The, why is it on the console? Or why is it console exclusive? Why... I mean, console exclusive makes sense, obviously, money. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, why do certain things work on console but don't really work as well on PC? That doesn't happen. <laughs> but, mm. uh, <laughs> never happens. Right. But th certain things that are coming to Switch, you kind of have to tilt your head and be like, yeah, but why? Just yeah. catching in? Is it... I mean, does I it guess... actually work? I think the answer that... Why? Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying to an extent. I guess the answer that people would give is that it's a portable console, so now I can right. play it anywhere. So there's some, there's some like you know, some logic to it, I guess. But it's like I feel I like a lot of it is fishing on a portable device. Would I play Go Vacation to get that, or would I play something else? I wouldn't say to go <laughs> to go vacation. I mean, I don't know. Some people like it. I mean, it, I wanted, to, I really wanted to like it. I don't know. It's just, it's just, just didn't work out. There. Aww. What it's else just, have you been? It, I mean, when it, it comes down to it, it was just a game that they rushed out on the Wii because they wanted to make money. Like, oh, uh, okay, gotcha. And Cash I, I just wish that I, oh, someone, I just want someone to make an adult version of that. Like, it's a kids game. <laughs> That's also what it is. It's a game for kids. Right. I want someone to make an adult version of Go Vacation with actual like depth into it. I feel like people would like it. I really do. I feel like people would suck time into that. A certain demographic or like audience would really like that kind of game if someone made it and took it seriously and showed it some, you know, some love. There, there are games like that where sometimes I do ask myself, it's like, why wouldn't you just go on vacation instead? <laughs> you yeah. Do all these activities. Money, well, I guess. Money. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no. Uh, what else have you been playing other than the sad thing that is go <clears throat> vacation port? <laughs> um, Persona Five. I've been playing Persona Five. It's super well, fun. I don't have much else to say. It's just a great game. I, I, I don't, I, 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 oh, I always like RPGs, but I'm very picky about what RPGs I'll play. Like people, for some reason, people were hitting me up like, when are you going to, when are you going to play or talk about, um, what's the name of that Switch RPG that came out? Octopath the, Traveler? Octopath, yeah. Mm. Like, what are you going to, you going to play Octopath? I'm just like, just not really my thing. Like, I don't know. I'm just not super, like RPGs are so long and they, they take are. so much time up. So I, I'm really picky with them, but Persona 5. It's just so fun. Persona games in general tend to be pretty good for me. Uh, that's one of the franchises I do usually, you know, sink time in on a console for, you know, portable, whatever. Yeah, I've been I, I've been taking my time with it. I, I've been playing it for like two months. I think I've just finished the third. I'm like about to start the fourth dungeon, I think. It's just so long. I don't have that much free time. So I'll come back like and play for like four or five hours like on like a free day and then wait like a week before I get back to playing it again. But I mean, it's, it doesn't matter how much time I put in between it. It's just like, it, I'm right back into it. It's such a fun game. Do you guys feel like- Yeah, I don't have anything I just need to say about it. Oh, <laughs> um, do you guys feel like that is uh, you know, common in your lives too? I feel like um, that as far as RPGs being a bit more of a time sink, like I used to be the kind of gamer that I would finish Atlas games. <laughs> I mean, and that's some really, yeah. this is some really, like, um, I would, yeah, it didn't matter yeah. really what it was. I was trying to think of, like, specific examples of Atlas games that I didn't finish, but actually, no, I believe I finished almost every single one of them that I ever played. 
and I would get looks from friends and people would be like, why are you sinking so much time into one game for that long? It's like 70, 80 hours into a game, 100 hours, 120 hours. At that, a certain point, you're like, what else are you doing with your life? Uh, now, these days, I, I really don't have time to sink into that. So I think that's probably why I have gone away a little bit from like I'll play a persona game when it comes out because I love the franchise I will invest I'll be the first person on that that you know on to buy it I'll be like yes of course I'm gonna get that of course I'm gonna play it but then I end up only playing it for maybe one or two hours and then it sits there and I feel really guilty yeah. about it I'd say I'd say that it's it's the line of work we're in but you know, YouTube, Twitch, and maybe that has, that, that probably has a big part to do with it, but that's also probably just like any, anyone, any adult that has a job, like you don't have that much free time. We, I mean, Jesse, we're kind of talking about this on break about wow a little bit yep. where it's like that. I mean, realistically, that was a big reason why I stopped playing was it just like, I could no longer dedicate the time I needed to dedicate to it in order to enjoy it. So I just had to kind of drop it. Mm. yeah, yeah I, it, it, it sucks just, but i found that i just don't enjoy them as much anymore like i rpgs are just long games in like general. long rpgs yeah i used to really love just like sinking my teeth into one but any kind of a game has to be really good for me to dedicate more than like 20 hours to it it seems like now i feel if like you could give me oh. An amazing game and put it in like an eight hour package i'd be the happiest human being who ever right? i love like short so yeah cool, well thought out games like those i'm are glad like i'm jam right now <laughs> i'm glad i'm not alone on that i love just a really good short game like just give me your best game wrap it up in a bow make it real quick and i it's like I, I, yeah, because I want to finish the games that I play. Yeah, and sometimes it's hard, and I think that's a big part of it. Like, I can't start this game if I know I'm not going to finish it. Like, right. and maybe that's a bad mindset. Maybe I should just play it anyway. But like, you know, it, it, you definitely get that feeling. Like, well, it's not worth it if I'm not going to be able to finish. I have games that I know for a fact that I will want to play, but I know that the time that I will need to invest is so long that I end up putting them aside. Either they're purchased or they're on a wish list. And I literally come back to maybe a year later and it's like, yeah, I really wanted to play that, but I didn't because I knew knew how, how much time it, I, I still need to go back and finish The Witcher 3. I need mm. to finish it and I haven't. I literally yeah. haven't. I've probably gotten at least three fourths of the way through that game. Still haven't finished it because when you come back from playing a game for so many hours and you leave it for a while and then you come back to it, sometimes it you get- confusing. I start over a lot of the time. And yeah, me too. It's disappointing. Me too like oh yeah of course i remember this and i'll go through it like hour by hour i'm just like yeah of course i remember that now but i didn't remember where i was i didn't remember what else i needed to do so mm -hmm. i'm not sure if that's especially a with game. a game like the witcher yeah I, I, it's I'm, rpg but at least in the witcher that gives you kind of indications like this is what you've done you know this is your journal this is what you know this is where you're going icons tell you where you need to be but i don't know just some sort of personal story it's like i need to continue like when i play dishonored games i feel very much the same kind of thing because it's like well was this a bad playthrough was i playing through i have to make sure my save games are saved a certain way it's like oh but they do it by default now with dishonored 2 which i'm so grateful for where it's like it tells you like are you being a baddie or are you being a goodie <laughs> it's like okay yeah i was completing the game doing this specific thing and going back mm. to those specific chapters is a good thing but there are so many games like rpgs uh dungeon crawlers even things like Monster Hunter, I know yeah. that I would put so many hours into Monster Hunter World if I could. I just can't. <laughs> and it makes me sad. I kind of had to drop Monster Hunter. I had just decided that I couldn't, I was not going to play it anymore. Monster Hunter World was my <laughs> last straw. It's because it's such a, it's a really fun game and I really enjoy it, but I can't keep up with everyone else that's, that I know that's playing it. So I end up just right. playing by myself right. and then I don't like it as much. So I, really I just kind of quit. I by myself. But playing Monster what? World, I really enjoyed playing Monster Hunter Try by myself. Um, but yeah, I Monster did. Hunter World, I think because I know so many people who are playing it, I feel kind of like I should be playing it with other people. Yeah, I feel like it feels like you're missing a big part of the game. Yeah. It, which would also make it easier, make you be able to get through it a little faster. This is another reason why going back to something like WoW for me is a bit of a hindrance, I feel like I would drag other people down. Like if I go right back to playing with the same people that I've played with before, 
I feel like I'm so far behind because I didn't do any of the pre-expansion stuff. It's like they already know all these things. And sure, I could invest the time and, you know, make it happen. I level very quickly, so it shouldn't bother me. But when I when I go into a new expansion, I am a, I'm a lore whore. I will be that person who wanders around aimlessly discovering absolutely everything, identifying absolutely every single thing. I analyze and overanalyze and I will go through and I will read the text of that quest very slowly. <laughs> and I won't pay attention to all of the indicators. I will try to find the the quest answers myself. And Yeah. <laughs> I that that mean, might be part of it for me too is I unless it's so specifically a multiplayer game, sometimes I just like playing by myself. I'm fairly introverted. So maybe I'm just partially like just not doing it without even realizing it. Like I could be playing with other people, but instead I want to just kind of chill and like do my own thing. But then I realized that the game would probably be better with multiplayer. I don't know. Or that the game kind of progresses without you <laughs> or other people are way far ahead of you. Yeah, especially in WoW. That's weird. Yeah. Felt like that with, I, I, uh, what was it? Old Republic, New Republic? Mm. And uh, it's like instead of giving us a new KOTOR, which I could have just been happy with. It's like, oh, that no, that's going to mow it. And well, Jesse and I could go on for that about a, a while. I think we did when it first came out. <laughs> like, I would have loved a, th a KOTOR I mean, 3 just, too, honestly. Yeah. That was, that was my, kind of my take on, oh no, they're making an MMO. Well, I guess there's no KOTOR 3. I tried to play it a little bit, but I don't know. It was kind of confusing. Um, yeah, are there any other games that you guys want to talk about? Anything that you're looking forward to playing? Dodger had her was, hand up. I oh, I'm sorry. I have to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so I can either understand. angle my camera away while you guys finish up or... Or we can wrap it up. I totally if, understand. If, if you guys are ready to wrap. Yeah. Just, uh, we're, what we're excuse could you possibly yeah. have? Yeah. <laughs> what excuse could you possibly have, Dodger? <laughs> That's so important. I just, I just want to make the point that we did not talk about news this week. <laughs> we didn't. No, and yeah. there's a good reason why we didn't. It's just because yeah. there's a lot of non-news out there all of the news that happened in the gaming industry this week it's not you guys news. don't want to you guys don't want to drop your hot takes on the important issues of the day no nope. I, I don't want i don't want to talk about ninjas unless we're talking <laughs> i have no hot takes i'm a broken man i have no hot takes my hot takes <laughs> i want a hot pad for my we're back we're too old we're too old for hot takes we have lukewarm takes my butt hurts i'm sorry i'm tired of sitting <laughs> i'm tired of sitting it's like I, I came out here with the express purpose it's like if i was going to talk about anything about ninja it's going to be like ninja studios and that's it peace not, yeah, I was going to mention not the touching it. Ninja. Nope. I didn't not even want to bring it. it up just in case. <laughs> not touching it. So, uh, yeah, if, if no one else has anything else at the moment, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, Jesse, what's going on for you on the channel this week? Uh, more We Happy Few, uh, Super Animu Fighters on Friday, another Fan Friday on Friday. Uh, another episode of Oddballs is either tonight or tomorrow, and uh, maybe... Maybe I'll stream more while WoW later, but most likely sleep. <laughs> probably won't. I probably won't. So yeah. Boop. How about you, Brooke? Real quick, anything coming up on the channel for you this um, week? I'll be doing more Pixelmon uh, tomorrow. We're actually going to be uh, showing off some a new Dodger Coffee thing. So David and I are going to be hanging out, uh, playing some games, and and uh, doing Dodger Coffee stuff. Ooh. And uh, yeah, I've been I've been doing Pixelmon for enough days in a row now that I'll probably play something different this week. Not sure what yet. Maybe some Death's Gambit that looks super up my alley. It does. So. Yeah, we need to talk about that on the next show. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Austin? What's coming up on your channel? Uh, I'm actually on a little bit of a vacation right now. Go <gasps> vacation! Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on my main channel, anyway. Uh, but I'll always have something. I always have something going on there. It just takes me forever to make. I was actually doing a Go Vacation video, and I, I've kind of got to the point where I'm like, maybe I just don't want to bother doing it, and we'll do something else. But I'll have something on there eventually. I've been streaming more. I do two streams a week usually, so that's been pretty fun. I've been doing that for a few months now. I always where, have. Where we can always people have, uh, find those for people unfamiliar with your work? Where can where can they go? Oh. Uh, just peanut butter gamer, twitch.com slash peanut butter gamer, youtube.com slash peanut butter gamer. I also have date. We also have daily videos on a, the, my, or on our, I guess, gameplay channel. Now a lot of people work on it. Now the guest last week was Jeff space answer. We do a show together on there. We, we have a uh, hardcore last it, week. <laughs> yeah. We just finished hardcore. Uh, Jesse was on it. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. We played a new game we'd never done before called Starbound. That was a lot of fun. You can binge watch that if you want. If we'll you have want have another see season. unable to cope with people dying, and giggling and then being yelled at by the audience because they seem insensitive. That's me. I'm that guy. 
Oh man! Oh, I'm, I'm like, not an <laughs> of us? oh, that's boy. that's yeah. what's so that's what's so fun about hardcore. I love I love having different people on because I don't normally work with people a lot and kind of work by myself. I, I'm not good at group projects, but like hardcore is fun because you get all these different people on. It's fun to see how everybody reacts. The hardcore comments usually my 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 chat on Twitch, my YouTube comments are pretty chill, but hardcore is definitely the exception to the rule. It can it's actually be frustrating up. sometimes. Like, you know, some people will be rude or whatever. And I'm like, guys, stop it. Like, don't do that. But like, people definitely take it seriously. That's what's they fun about it. it. They, it they really care about it. And they want they want it to go well. Some people just want to see people die. So if we go for a long time and nobody dies, then they're like upset about it. Basically, you have one life <laughs> in the game. If you die, you're out. You try to complete the goal. That's the whole point of it. But yeah, we'll have a new I season know, of that coming out soon. But the serious part. I was <laughs> like, oh, shit, that guy died. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. in the moment i didn't know oh fuck it well. yeah no it, it 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 doesn't matter though like everybody reacts differently that was part of what was most part of my favorite thing about that season was watching how you played first of all not everybody even knew how to play starbound but it was fun especially to see how like a new guest reacts like how are they going to react and and you you were just sort of having fun with it which is like is a valid way to, to do it well you know yeah <laughs> honestly i thought it was gonna be dead episode once so the fact that like <laughs> People were dying. I was like, <laughs> how do I react to this? Yeah. 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 So it was fun. Yeah, you can binge watch that. Jesse was on there. Dodger was on, what was it, Minecraft? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> six or something. I can't keep track of how many Minecraft. Six. You know. Nice. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to playing some Death Gambit because uh, 2D adventure RPGs are my thing when I can put time into them and Phantom Doctor and because XCOM <laughs> plus spies. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, next week, uh, we will be back with episode 225. Uh, our guest for that show will be Aurelian. Um, so, what? so hopefully you guys will be able to tune in. Uh, yeah. And that has literally been the Co-Optional Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you so much to our usual hosts. And thank you, Austin, for coming on and being our guest so we could abuse you of, and, you know, use you and talk about all the worlds of video games that we don't want to live in or do want to live Thanks in. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. All fun. right, guys. We will see you next time. Peace. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.